So, welcome to another Sabean classic by the master teacher Baba Yanun, one of his great works, The Holy Tablets. Introduction A personal note from the receiver. I call you to accept this truth as bestowed upon me by the masters who guide my pen, for of myself I could not have done the works of it. There were a host of great Ethiopian leaders such as Dusi Ali, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Sheikh Al Hajj Daoud Faisal, Clarence Jawa Smith, Clifton E. March, Noble Jurali, Ali, Marcus Garvey, to name a few, who have all contributed to the upliftment of the fallen and trodden over, and much abused Ethiopian moors. Many newsletters, books, and newspapers have been written. Yet the conditions of the Ethiopians have not changed. As the saying goes, Allah does not help a people until they help themselves. It's time for you to get up and do something for yourselves. This is the scripture that is divinely inspired that will bring about a long overdue change, like the phoenix bird rising from its ashes. Up, you mighty people, come forth like Lazarus from the tomb. This tablet is food to feed the hunger and to nourish the soul, to give it strength. Rise up, stand up, be counted amongst the people of this world. This tablet will restore the savour to the salt, that you may spice the whole world, that you may taste the sweet savour, and that you may spice up the lives of all that you come in contact with. For in these tablets is no doubt. It's the true guidance that you can be sure of. But only those with an inner ear will be able to hear the voice of our Heavenly Father calling to his children to gather on the Holy Kodesh, the golden city of Wanahi, and sit at the feet of his son, the Lamb, that has been transformed into the Lion, Tammuz, as known to many as HaMashiach, the true Messiah, when he returns, as heralded by the receipt of this most holy text, the Holy Tablets, Naya Malachi Zadok El. This holy scripture is needed. The holy tablets come from the ancient ancient original tablets inscribed in cuneiform, later borrowed and in part to form what became the Torah, which became the Holy Bible, which yielded many scriptures, old as well as new, and even later the Holy Quran. This is by far the greatest of all, for it contains all they were trying to express, but couldn't because they didn't have the whole truth and all the facts. Look at the world today, when human beings and angelic beings alike no longer have an effect on the minds and souls of a people on a planet such as this one. Then Anu, who is Alien Alien El, the Most High, called by Arabs al Ali, the Most High, and his 36th number of the 99 best names of Allah, the Source, brings into being a supreme being referred to as a Zadok, or one of the Anunakai Alahum, and endows this being an Ila Mutajasid, an avatar, with the right knowledge, right wisdom, and right understanding. We are at such a time now, and the answers are to be found within the pages of the Holy Tablets, also called the Book of the Lamb. and teachers claim to be your saviors, but all use just the same books, Bibles or Qurans, or books written thousands of years before their time, outdated information. But you need your history renewed by a renewer, a reformer, an El Mutadud, not the 1400-year-old interpretation of the Quran, or the 4000-year-old interpretation of the Torah, or the 2000-year-old interpretation of the New Testament called the Bible, not to mention all the misleaders who have come along and made up their own interpretations to mislead you. Well, the time has come for that renewer, and this is it. He has renewed El's holy Torah, El's holy Injil, El's holy Sabor, El's holy Quran, the holy Quran, Circle 7, the Moorish holy temple of science, the problem book of the poor righteous teachers of this planet, the Egyptian book of the dead coming forth by day, and more. He has translated from the original tongues for you, and that you may be renewed.
Let's see what a Muslim would say. Muhammad is the last and greatest or the seal of the prophets, and the Quran is the last scriptures. But this can't be true. Just look at the very condition of planet Earth and the state of its inhabitants. I have prophesied many things in the many books that I have put forth, and they have all come to pass thus far. And I have foretold even more events that would come unto this world, and they shall also come to pass. You will find in the many books that I have set the record straight. All of these prophecies should tell you that the Arabic Quran that they have today is not the final message of salvation. Just look at the Muslim world divided against itself, killing and fighting each other over the Quran which was revealed in the year 610, over 1400 years ago called Al-Quran. And its author, Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin, who died in the year 632 AD from poison in his food. Its message has not put an end to the evil that plagued the world, and in fact caused more wars and evils that's happened because of the Quran and how Muslims have misinterpreted it, and what it makes its followers feel about all others. The Quran and the Bible has failed more than any other books ever written, insofar that they are misunderstood by those who claim to follow them to the letter. As for the Hebrew Torah, it does not preach salvation, merely history and geography. So now it's time for a scripture to be revealed in this day and time, for a people who are lost but now found. Read the holy tablets and decide for yourself, for the hourglass is almost empty. The holy tablets was divinely inspired after reading the Torah, the holy Quran, the Ratib, the Book of Life, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the writings of Confucius, the Book of Buddha, the tablets of Adapha, the tablet of Nurgle and Arishkigil, the tablet of Ishtar and Tammuz, and the tablet of Itana, the Adra Hadith, the Akkadian tablets, the Gilgamesh epics, the tablets tablets of Anzu, and the Sumer tablets, and the events and leaders and their teachings that unfolded from those tablets to this present day. You will not only find that what has been revealed to me is without doubt, but it will bring you towards a greater understanding of your inner self. What is behind the words in this text is all that has come through me to bring you to the next level. This is why I have been sent to you, in order that you receive this divine revelation, and one that has never before been compiled into one text. I am one of those teachers who have come with a message for a people. So gather yourselves and know that within the confines of these pages is the right knowledge, the right wisdom and the right understanding, which leads to sound right reasoning. Walk with me on the narrow path and take the overdue first step and read with the intent of understanding all that has been given. For in this text there is undisputed truths, which are facts beyond any doubt. This holy tablets will not only lead you to right thinking, it will take you to the next level. It will, if overstood, break the spell, the spell of ignorance, ignoring the facts, the spell of sleep, the spell of spiritual ignorance and racial blindness. Within these tablets you may find a similarity to many holy scriptures, such as the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, the Quran and many spiritual writings, as well as learned people whose information these days and times are being forgotten or misused. I have read most of what has been recorded on this planet. Find the truths of their messages necessary for the people on the earth to get a full and complete understanding of the truth. It's no coincidence that these tablets are laced with these messages, for truth is truth, and the world who surpasses their teacher's interpretation. This scripture is a holy scripture, divinely inspired from the spirits who incarnate in the form of prophets, apostles, and sires who have spoken to my heart and activated my mind to bring you this final revelation. Within its covers you will find guidance from this to the next world and on. My child, in this world you must understand that the most authentic and safe means of achieving purity of the soul and contentment of the heart is to devote your tongue to the remembrance of the all. To know the all is to ponder over the significance of your growth as an individual and to accustom yourself to the absorption of facts in your mind and heart in perfect faith and awareness. The Holy Tablets affirms that you are all in the all and the all is a part of you. And know this, this holy tablet that is divinely inspired is to prepare the way for the end. The best course to achieve this end is that you should recite the words within the confines of these pages with zeal and fervor and develop the habit to study regularly. Study also with devotion and concentration the teachings of our great teachers. This is how it was revealed to me and this is how I give it unto you. The best way to make money in 2022 that nobody is talking about 
is using Audible. Okay, right here I have a paycheck from Audible for $3,200, another $3,000, $5,000, $1,000, all of these paychecks I have been collecting from Audible. And you can see here, Audible is an Amazon company. It is a buy and sell marketplace where people upload podcasts and audiobooks. The beauty of these checks that I have been collecting here is I don't create anything. I don't create audiobooks. I don't create the podcast. All I do is I upload them to Audible and I get paid every single month. So I wanna show you how I was able to do this. Three years ago, I met a guy named Christian and Christian showed me the beauty of Audible and how untapped it was. What I'm going to do is if you click on the link below in this ad, you'll be able to attend a free training that Christian put together. The exact same things that he taught me. Chapter one, the creation. Begin all acts and thinking by using El Kalum, the all. Tablet one. The epic of creation and before. 19 times 6 equals 114. Hello, my children. Allow me to speak with you, for it is that time again. Every 25,000 years for the renewal of your way of life, Nuwapu. Let me speak with you of the beginnings of life before and after the knowledge bestowed upon you of your very own creation, the making of this planet that you call Earth, and many other planets of which you have no knowledge of. Your soul, that is the emotional you, is about to embark on the journey through time and space within existence, through a time not yet encountered by the behemoth, the human beast, and the humming beings, and the children of the Alahum. The humming being of who, creative force of will, and Mim, also Mami, meaning the deity of birth, which is another name for Mother Ninti who gave birth to the mortals. The human beings of who, the creative force of will, and Main from the Latin spirits of the dead. Within the confines of this holy tablet, you shall embark on such knowledge, which has never been made so clear before this, for you, by any. Let me start by telling you about the beings that existed trillions of Earth years ago, before the Precambrian period. Before you, human beings were created in physical form upon the planet Tiamat, now called Earth, from the word Eridu. There existed supreme beings of green light, ethereal and sub-supreme beings of the impure amber light fire. You cannot fully comprehend their beginnings because their time zone is much greater than you and your ability to comprehend at this point. Yet this very tablet which you are holding in your hand will open your eyes to their time zones that are in and beyond space. These supreme beings called the Anunnaki or Natiru, whose way of life was called Nawapu, were endowed by El Kalum the All with a superior overstanding of 720 degrees in all, 360 degrees of spiritual or ethereal state, the circle, and 360 degrees of physical material state, the square. Glory be to the one appointed who is called in tones Anu and on earth El Elo, known to many by different titles, and the best of which is known to you as Ansars is Allah, in which he is 360 degrees of the physical world and the light of this heaven and earth, in which he is also. You should know that eventually the time will come when these supreme beings, the Anunnaki, would have to descend upon Earth in order to guide the inhabitants back to their home in and beyond the stars, thereby helping them to become once again the supreme beings of the pure green light, ethereal energy that they once were. But first, one must be sent to prepare a way, and that one is myself. And so it was, for once Hummins became rulers of the planet Earth, you gradually forgot that your purpose in life was to gain your way back towards the sustainer, which would be the token home, but instead you became engrossed in your own desires. While in pursuit of physical gratification and material gain, Hummins forgot the purity with which they were formed. As a result, you have strayed from the original ways of the universe and the spiritual path that led you to your true destiny. Universal right knowledge, right wisdom, and the right overstanding on to sound right reasoning called Nuwapu. Nuwapu informed you that there were three creations, original or primary creation, primus, from premise first, 
Before the lightest atom, hydrogen, energies existed as a form of energy existing in the form of gases. Nine levels of them from quirks to biops to zeals, referred to as subatomic energy. Before weight or the sum of any weights registering as nothingness, yet existing being lighter than the first form of existence, hydrogen. Secondary or evolutionary creation, the evolving of existence from density to matter to atoms to cells to organisms to bodies. And tertiary, tertius, from tertius third, or gustational creation, the breath of life, the living soul, the existing conscious being. Primary creation was performed by the nine ether beings, simply etherans, who science is nuwaku. Nine ether represents birth, conception in a nine, and birth or some total of numbers. There are no numbers actually higher than nine. Nuwaku means to convey a message that results in sound right reasoning. So there must be a conveyor and a listener of the message. The message is life, the conveyor is existence. Three sets of three or triple darkness. First set before light, before energy, before matter. Second set before time, before space, before place. Third set before... I wanted my hepatitis C gone. I put off treating mine. Epclusa. Body before soul, before spirit. Nine ether is the combination of all existing gases of nature. Nothing anywhere can be as powerful as all the existing gases. On Earth, these gases are known as radon, Rn, with an atomic number of 26. Xenon, Xe, with an atomic number of 54. Krypton, Kr, with an atomic number of 36. Argon, Ar, with an atomic number of 18. Neon, Ne, with an atomic number of 10. And helium, He, with an atomic number of 2. These are also called the noble gases on a periodic or elemental chart, on the physical chart. However, on the E4 chart, they are listed as E2, E10, E18, E26, E36, and E54. And note the word element and elementary from elementum. First principle, rudiment, beginning. Used as elementary, the beginning without importance as of yet. Therefore, nine ether is the most potent power in all the boundless universes. Nine ether is the original creator who grew all the universes. Nine ether beings utilize the forces that yield energy, versing energy into one form, the universe. Uni meaning uni from unis, one, and verse meaning verse to turn a spiral spiraling outward from a single point creation from the word creera to bring forth create produce to cause to grow means growth into form or system destruction means change in form or composition nine ether is conscious and conscience gases the melanites the original woolly haired dark-skinned mers or moors came along with the original creation that is the same kind of ether forces that grew the universe. As nature was growing, these melanites were part of the original growth. Melanin grew with the original creation. To come along with a thing is to grow with or within it. Six ether are nine points from ether one into darkness. The melanites manifest from point one in hydrogen on into nine elements, the eighth being oxygen for life. The dot, nagut, is the point of origin of things, the first sun. Therefore, the melanites and their evolutionary descendants are the personification of the original creative forces, who, seven in all. As the seven species of Riskians, you have seven species of melanites or Nuwapians called Negroids, and you have three species of Mongoloids and two species of Caucasoid, all growing out of the original Nuwapians. Simply, these melanites created the universes in their Ephric form. Nine ether then personified themselves as flesh and blood beings. They became human beings from atoms to atoms. There are two kinds of ether, nine ether and six ether in human form. Nine ether negroid produce six ether caucasoid, and six ether produce ghost, death. Not to be mistaken with the ethers of hair that range from six, seven, eight, and nine in hair texture, from flat to hollow to round. Nine ether will become six ether through time and age, die. Six ether becomes ghost through time and age. Six ether albino is nine ether Nuwapians in death.
and ghost is the death of six ether. After the death of six ether, nine ether resurrects again. Six ether is the moon and nine ether is the sun. Hence, six ether is adverse to nine ether, just as death is a first to life. All this takes place within the all. It was then that the true force of the universe personified those supreme beings, the original Melanites, dark-skinned, woolly-haired Moors, personified by both sound and electric energy. Both positive and negative electro, from the modern Latin electris, meaning resembling amber, amber, being negative and magnetic from the Latin magnetis, lodestone, being positive, light or the illuminati being electro, and the light spectrum being magnetic. The cosmic ray for emerald being from 001 nanometer, nana equals the deity sin, meter equals mother or meta in tones, meta meaning matter or material, form to 99,000 miles. Nanometer is the modern term used, preferred over angstrom, used in measuring visible light. One nanometer is 10 to the 9 one billionth of a meter and is equal to one angstrom, being a unit of length equal to one hundredth millionth of a centimeter used especially to specify radiation wavelengths. After Anders Jonas Angstrom, a Swedish astronomer and physicist, light is defined by wavelengths, which is the measure of the distance from one peak or top of a wave of light or energy to another. Cosmic rays being the shortest and the longest being electric power. Between the two are gamma rays, which is electronic radiation sent from radioactive decay. Beef farmers and ranchers around the country are implementing land conserving, wildlife protecting, award ranging from 10,000 to 10 million electron volts. X-rays, which is a relatively high energy photon or amount of electronic energy used for penetration power. Also ultraviolet light rays, which are a range of invisible radiation ranging from 4 nanometers to 380 nanometers, just beyond the color violet in the visible spectrum. Infrared light rays, a range of invisible radiation bordering along microwaves about 750 nanometers. Microwaves are high frequency electromagnetic wave measuring one millimeter to one meter in length. Television waves, the transferring of visual images and sound using electromagnetic waves with the reconversion of received waves into visual images. Radio waves, a wireless transmissions through space with a frequency of 10 kilohertz to 300,000 megahertz. And electric power coming from the reaction of attraction and repulsion of unalike and alike proton and electrons. Television waves and radio waves are also forms of light laser. There is also the visible spectrum, which runs from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers in wavelength. Nanometers being one billionth of a meter from the word nanar, the Sumerian deity Sin, and meter from the Greek metron meaning measure, with all light throwing through a prism or a medium that represents whatever is seen through it, used to separate white light coming from the Latin prisma, from the Greek prisma, things sawed off, prism, from praying, prisine, to saw, the light becomes six colors, yellow, blue, red, green, orange, and purple. Light in its aspheric form is at its atomic level. When you see full spectrum light in physical state, it manifests as blackness. That is, all light and color combined are blackness, and the manifestation of the solid form of light is melanin. Thus, they manifested from the great circle and throne of wisdom to this meager place. This is how the events of creation and pre-creation were recorded, when life existed in and beyond the stars. The all is, was, and will be, felt with love, a divine love that is unknown or felt by those disagreeable beings, and thus emotions were. At the first birth of emotions was the birth of motion. Things gradually began to move about, and it was then that movement and motion were conceived out of triple darkness, for the light birthed the chaos. Thus the motion to create did manifest in existence, and all that exists exists within the all. Thus things became what they were to become known as, before they existed, or what they would exist as. This is true caring. If you say you love Anu, then why do you not have faith in Anu? who is also known as El Elo, who is called in rhythm Allah by the Muslims, meaning ones who are of peace. Be on your guard, for they have been invaded by the disagreeable ones' children as well.
Anu is also called Yahweh by the Hebrews, Theos by the Christians, and God by many others. He was appointed by the All as your caretaker. Anu appointed one of the Yahwehans called Tammuz, son of Ishtar or Inanna, daughter of Nana Sin, also called Isis or Aset, also called Astarte, Astaroth, the Phygrian Sibyl, and Kali. This Tammuz was also called in tones Horus, Theos, Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Christos, a son of the Muzi, who is also called the Cyrus, Usir, Dian, Ushidist, and Eli, and the Abba of Tammuz, or Abatala, the Heavenly Father, son of the Heavenly One, Anu. Thus it is said of Tammuz, the Nienoshites began to call upon the name of Yahweh. If you say you have faith by way of him, who is your caretaker Anu, who appointed Yeshua HaMashiach, called Isa, Jesus, and Tammuz, then I ask you, why do you not trust him? For it is Anu, also called El, that is trustworthy. If you say you love him, why do you not strive towards him? And if you say you are sensible, then why do you not tremble at the mention of Anu? Surely it is Anu who has been appointed your caretaker, and has appointed the Anointed One, a Yahuwah called Tammuz, from which the door at the gate of Yahuwah, the women of that house, wept for Tammuz. This is merely one of the many houses of Yahuwah. This is recorded in the scripture of Ezekiel, 8th degree, the 14th verse. This appointment of Anu was done by the All, within the All, for as Anu became who he is, it had to be in accordance with the will of All, and the appointment of the Anointer was done by Anu, both being Yahwehans in the All. It is he, Anu, who has transformed from ether into a flesh-embodied being, and then returns at will to ether. He was an appointed El Elo, Allah, who saw the confusion which was caused by the fusion of emotions. The collision of emotions in this solar system came into being as time passed. It became known emotionally as that which is the right to do and that which is the wrong to do. Those who agree and those who disagree, the act that is good and the act that is evil. Thus, the birth of will is the beginning of confusion. Confusion arose, and this somberness, a dull feeling, was felt in his, Anu's heart. Out of divine love and great concern, with compassion and caring, he began to call out and ordered all the blessed and chosen children of the All, the Ephraims, who incarnated into the form of the Anunnaki, which is known to many as Alahum or Natiru, as known to the ancient Egyptians, he ordered them to incarnate in his spirit, with the responsibilities for this now desolate solar system. It was here that life of all kinds and spiritual beings lived and thrived. Those extraterrestrials, the sky dwellers, who came to this planet to be the extraterrestrials, Anunnaki, Natiru, Alahum, angelic beings, or be they of the terrestrial, that is this planet Earth, the land dwellers and even those beings who came to the land from the deep sea, and all the species of all that were agreeable people and disagreeable people who did tread to and fro on the earth's surface, the ground, and swarm in the seas and flew in the skies of this planet Ki, now called Earth, from the word Iridu. But by the disorder of these disagreeable species was destruction caused by meteorites, which are large pieces of debris that enter the atmosphere and reaches the ground, and that caused the light of the sun to be blocked by dust clouds. Meteorites are chips of asteroids that can be rock or metal. The daylight had gone where pure light once was, and no light reigned. Void was upon the surface of the deep. Ordering his spirit beings to hover above the surface of the deep, while the great spirit prepared for the reconstruction of this now desolate place. It was to be a great replenishing, yet not without fault, for life does dwell beneath the deep. The greatest variety of organism lives beneath the deep seas of the planet Tiamat. These sea waters make up 85% of all water on the earth. Under this vast watery surface are the tallest peaks and the deepest valleys in the planet. Sea water is really pure water in which compounds have been dissolved. Salts account for most of these dissolved substances. And the total amount of salts dissolved in seawater is known as salinity, from the Latin word salinus, from sal meaning salt. A rejuvenation and another chance was in the heart and mind of the most holy spirit. So one was selected from amongst the many to be guardian over these beings, to be born to be El Rahamur, the merciful, and El Ramun, the yielder. El Hakam, he who is wise, El Gedush, he who is holy, El Yataf, he who is kind, and he who is the establisher of peace, he who is the peace, El Salam, 
the loving El Ashuk, and the one and only sustainer of the solar system, soon to become the tri-solar system in the preparation for the Elder's arrival. The other suns are already on their way. One such brighter light or star, about 25,000 light years from Earth, has been seen in the direction of Sagittarius constellation, being named the Pistol Star, which cannot be seen with the naked eye because of the dust clouds which absorb the visible light of stars. This sun is 10 million times as bright as the sun already existing in this solar system. And when my soul has spoken unto me, and has confirmed in my heart and mind, glory be to El Sabur, the patient, Selah. Glory be to the kind, El Latuf. Glory be to Anu, he who is the giver, El Nafan. Glory be to the endower, El Wahab. Glory be to he who is the bestower, El Mana. Glory be to he who is the healer, El Shafe. Glory be to the first, El Wah. Glory be to the honor, El Mauz. Glory be to the supporter, El Tamul. Glory be to Anu, he who is the sufficient. Glory be to Elion Elion El. He who is the protector, glory be to El Habuk, he who is the embracer, and glory be to the helper, and glory be to the one El Wahed, glory be to the only one, and glory be to the encourager El Saju, glory be to the benefactor El Manun, glory be to the enduring El Bagai, glory be to the uplifter El Rafur, glory be to the light El Nawar. Glory be to El Yahua, he who is the beneficent El Jalal, Salah. Glory be to the supreme El Azum. Glory be to the evident El Zahur. Being one of the Anunakai, he is called Anu, the source, who is the son of Anshar and Kishar, the chosen son of the faithful, El Amunmul. O Anunakai, he who has descended into and around me, guide me in all that I do. Help me that I may help all Hamims. Let me speak from your head and not my own. Let me care from your heart and not from my own. Let me see from your eyes and not see from my own. I am El Chesedit, known in tones as Yanun and El Kut. Al Sayyida Isa Al Hadi Admati. Amanu Bi Rakta, Rabboni Yeshua Ba El Hadi, who is the Maku Nayamalakai Zadok El of today. I am to serve, not rule. Make me of your best of servants. I am sent to fix that which is broken. I incarnate from time to time for those who are in need of my presence in the flesh. I am an Anunakai, an Alahun, an Avatar, or an Ila Mutajasid, who you would simply call and known as an angelic being. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using Al Kalum the All. Tablet 2 The Beginning 19 times 6 equals 114. Lo, in the very beginning was the Word. Existence was this Word, and creation came afterwards. Nothing would exist if Anu Elion Elion El didn't create it. In order for Anu to create it, he must have existed. If the Christians say that God is the creator of all things, or the Hebrews say that Yahweh is the creator of everything, or the Muslims say that Allah created everything, then Yahweh, Allah or God must have existed, though there is existence before creation. Nothing was created except by way of Allahu Akbar. He, Allah, who originally was known as Anu, and An, was and is and will be the intellect. Intellect, intellectual, lect, lecture, the speaker of the word that existed in the beginning, or simply where things began from hydrogen, on through the elements. Overstanding these points, where things sum up to something and existence, predates creation as darkness predates light, as ether before the lightest hydrogen is weighed to have a sum and from ether on into triple darkness, the root of all thinking, that is one, the state of quirks, the first degree of darkness, the first degree of nothingness, two biaps, the second degree of darkness, and three zeals, the third degree of darkness. The weight or the sum of things or other thing pre-weight nothingness yet exists. Knowing these truths is called right knowledge, right wisdom and right understanding. He was not always the green solar light, but created himself into a green light to be witnessed of his creation as El Elo. 
El Rab sustainer of glory illuminating the green light of Makael from himself to rule Malakut. So the green essence of presence was necessary for identity and that identity was ruler El Malak which is the third point in existence and the third attribute of Allah. 1. El Rahman 2. El Rahamo 3. El Malak Mikael Murdoch being the highest of all the rabbis of the Anunagai, the Allahum of the crystal essence, which is the splendor of beauty. Light is a manifestation of energy detectable, not speculated, but calculated. So Anu manifested himself, the unform in form, to be detectable and logged in what's called time and space. And that energy began as a light, a color in light, which is the presence of a sun. And the color green is growth, as in life through herbs, vegetation and trees of the land, and algae of the seas. The color green is conceived between the blue seas water and the color yellow sun rays, the fourth color of the prism, the fourth point in growth or creation, the mental plane. The crystal essence became divided in two parts. One was extremely pure and luminous, However, the other appeared to the vision of the intellect to be inferior to the first. The first was called light, the pure green light, the light of the Anunnaki, Sarafut, Seraphim, those agreeable beings of growth. And the second was called fire, the impure amber light, the light of the Anunnaki, Garabat, the cherubim, those disagreeable beings, destruction or consumption. Of the first that are to come are the noble and superior individuals, the souls of El Nabiyat, the newsbearers, El Rasulat, the apostles, El Masir, El Hadi, El Mujadad, and the people of the right hand. All agreeable things are created from the green light of the benevolent beings, concealed. The Anunnaki Yahwehin, simply called Yah, Sarafat, and did manifest as green. But in time, as iron replaced the magnesium molecule in the blood, the pure melanin was lost. Thus from green to rust your color did become. Of the second, the fire was created the malevolent beings, reveal the Illuminati, which are the jinns, genie, the disagreeable Anunnaki, the disagreeable Yahweh, and simply called Wei, those who are Garobat, a race of disagreeable Anunnaki, who were created before Kadmon Zakar. These are the followers of Tarnash as Shakar, the Luciferian. One third of these beings from Ilyun were cast from their home in the 19th galaxy Ilyun, where the Akasha records of agreeable acts are kept, as opposed to Sejin, where the Azeret records of all disagreeable acts are kept. To make a new home in the Orion star constellation, the disagreeable ones made their homes in Betaglees, Rigel, and Bellatrix. The Cycles the first cycle was a dot in the universe, then that dot became a line. The line became a wall, the wall became a square. The first dot split like a daughter cell into two. The second dot formed a circle by completing one cycle around itself. No one knows save itself where the circle begins and ends. Then it began to spin to form an orb and thus 360 degrees of square and 360 degrees of circle. The circle was turned inside out and placed within the confines of the square. This was accomplished by first dividing the circle into four parts. Geometry was created and dimensions were formed. Geo, Kai and Metri measure. The square that you know on this plane is not the same as its counterparts on the spiritual plane and the plane of force. These planes are not perceived by the ordinary human eye. The energy which was confined in the square tried to escape. It pushed upward and outward and downward. This constant friction created heat to the degree that the square could no longer withstand and an explosion of enormous force occurred. This event had not yet been manifested on the physical plane as the birth of the universe, the formation of stars, galaxies and planets on the physical side. When energy beings manifest atoms, they make up atoms, which then become compounds and elements, as opposed to physical beings, atoms, who manifest and make up cells, which become organisms and bodies. When the Anunnaki Elohim of 360 degrees splits into two beams of 180 degrees each, meaning the disagreeable is on the outside, 
If the male child is agreeable, the female twin counterpart is disagreeable. If the female is agreeable, the male twin or counterpart is disagreeable. The one must conquer the other to become agreeable or to become a child of light, imperfection, that was clicked on in the darkness of perfection. In this way was the disagreeable being created, calling them twins. Every person born was a twin. One defeated the other, and that is how each of you were born. This is called the concept of survival of the fittest. The concept of survival of the fittest begins from the very moment sperm is ejaculated into the vaginal canal. Each of the sperm cells are ejaculated and races to the ovum or egg of the female to fertilize it, and only one of those sperm cells survived the journey beating out all the other sperm cells in their normal birth. Normally, conception occurs with one egg released from a woman's ovary is fertilized by one male sperm. Seven out of ten pairs of twins result from the woman releasing two eggs, which are then fertilized quite independently by two sperms. Fraternal twins, usually the two eggs then implant and develop separately in the uterus. Less commonly, one egg fertilized by one sperm divides, resulting in two developing babies with the same inherited characteristics, identical twins. Often, this division occurs after implantation in the uterus. Monozygotic from the word mono, Middle English, from Old French, from Latin, from Greek, from monos, meaning single alone, and zygote meaning yoke, which is derived from a single fertilized ovum or embryonic cell mass. This usually happens with identical twins, in which it occurs after fertilization and often after implantation in the uterus. As a result, twins almost always share the placenta, although each has its own cord and bag of water. Fraternal births are dizygotic, meaning they have two zygotes, di2 and zygote, which is a cell formed by the union of two Ganymedes, especially a fertilized ovum before cleavage. From Greek, zucatus, yoke, from zygone, meaning to yoke, derived from two separately fertilized Eggs. There are also polyzygotic fraternal twins, from the word poly, Greek polu, from polis meaning much, many, and again zygo from zygot, which are births that are caused by fertility drugs. They arise from two or more fertilized eggs, and may be from either sex. Fraternal twins have separate water bags and cords, and separate placentas as well. Occasionally, the two eggs implant closer together in the uterus, so that the placentas become fused, and it looks as though the twins are sharing the same one. So each time an agreeable Inunakai was born, whether male or female, his her twin was to be disagreeable. The creation of the Luciferians order, or Jin Jini, was the end of the first cycle. The beginning of the second cycle was half a diameter of 7,000 years, in which you have what you call the angelic beings, be they agreeable, Sarafat, or disagreeable, Garubat. They, the race of Natas, were cast down to the fourth plane, the mental plane, and made to dwell on the second plane, the plane of force, before their physical form. El Elo, the source, gave them ruling comfort until the end of the second cycle, or the 14,000 year after their creation. At the beginning of the third cycle, which took 7,000 years, you have the disagreeable Wei, Garabat, and the agreeable Yah, Sarafat, both of which are called the Yahwehans or Jehovans, and you also have the process of the Adamites, of the 14 generations before the completion of the Adama project in the laboratory in Sidonia called Shimti, the Lamahu Mars Project, or the Sphinx Project. This genetic breeding and splicing, chromosome tampering, is that which gave birth to the Kadmon, also called Zakar, and even Adam. These Yahwehan or Jehovans were both personifying in the physical form to come to the planet Earth as physical beings, for there was no place found any more for them in the fourth plane, the heavens. For when the Wayans heard the news of the creation of the Adama project and the prototype that was laid before them, they created much war and mischief in the heavens. This war is recording in the scripture Revelation 12 degree 7 verse as, And there was a war in heaven. Murdoch and his Seraphat fought against the Draco Hilal and his Garabat, and the Seraphat did win, so there was no place found any more in Oranus or Orion for them. 
and the great dragon who was Halal, son of Shakar, was cast out, that old reptilian called the devil, and the serpent which deceived the whole planet Earth. He was cast out into Earth, and his garabet did personify with him. After that, the Natas began to do disagreeable acts and disobey El Elo, the head Yahweh, the most high deity of all deities, the source, and he condemned them. Natas, also called Lucifer, was an extra being on Terra, or what you would refer to as an extraterrestrial. The Luciferian order came out of a group of extraterrestrial beings called the Yahwehs, sometimes called the Jehovahs. The Luciferians would interfere with the beings on this planet called Earth and pass themselves off as gods. The Luciferians, after taking their independence, were allowed to work with the Yahwehans together at one time to conquer certain portions of the planet. But one such Luciferian named Halal, son of Natas or Shakar, wanted to rule all the stars of the heavens, meaning all the Yahwehs. Leviathan, the serpent people, one of the reptilian seeds, or the Luciferians, have been trying to gain control over this planet for many thousands of Earth years. They are called the Sex Spirit Force, also called Porne. They are able to seduce and deceive all those with desires on Earth, turning lust into luster, thereby attracting and controlling all with it. As Nakebu was seduced by the Leviathan powers of lust, it is the death of divinity and the birth of morality. That's why the Intergalactic Federation quarantined the planet. If enough entities were looking for freedom from the control of the Luciferians, the Intergalactic Federation would remove these forces from Earth. Yet Hamim's love to lust and lust to love, expressing energy in motion, overexerting their emotions, bringing about their spiritual death. There is a group called the Satanists who are not the same as the Luciferians. Their other names are the Denyans or Nakashites or Kanaz. The Satanists are more sadistic than the Luciferians, whose leader was Lucifer, also called Matas, which is simply Satan spelled backwards. They are also called Shayatinian. They have supplanted themselves in every facet of life that you can think of, and now they have you naming yourselves after them. The Satanists seek mind control and dominance while the Luciferians seek to control the energies of others. They are best described as vampires who draw energy from others, also called Dracula, Dracos, or Dragos, or serpent dragon called Leviathan. These Luciferians are from a planet called Maldek, the 11th planet. This planet called Earth even has Luciferians and Yahwehans, and some of them are disagreeable a They don't usually work together. However, they will come together if there is a common interest. The Yahwehans were the original 24 elders. There were 12 ex-Luciferians to dissatisfied. The other 12 were the agreeable Deniers. That's why you have 12 satisfied and 12 dissatisfied. Shakar who is also called Hambaba, or Zuen and Tarnish, subjected all of them, the Jehovahs called Luciferians, to the chastisement of the eternal damnation, except for the weak ones of the family of Allahum. These he has pardoned, and has appointed one of them, Halashai, to be their governor. And he granted them a new law called religion. It was other than the warp who sound right reasoning. When the cycle elapsed, the wicked sons of Shakar or Tarnish blasphemed and committed disagreeable acts because their nature was intended to be recalcitrant or to show defiance. Anu Elion Elion El, the Most High, sent Murdoch, the son of Enki and Damkina, who is called Mikael, and the agreeable beings to admonish them and advise them. However, it was in vain. Murdoch was sent because he knew that. Their nature, having been the disagreeable twin of his sister Balat, who was agreeable. So in the beginning of the fourth cycle of 7,000 years, you have Seraphit, Garabit, and Hummings, later called humans, be they agreeable or disagreeable. You see, the cycle is broken up into fours. When these disagreeable beings were cast out, one further of them were cast out from the 19th galaxy, Ilion, with Tarnish. Now you have the sun and you have the ten planets. Planets speak up when they get closer to the sun. The ancient Greeks called certain points of light in the skies the planetai or planet, a word that means wandering stars, and named them after their gods Hermes, Aphrodite, Ares, Zeus and Kronos. Instead of using the names of the Greek gods, these planets are now called by the names of the Roman equivalents, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Planets shine by reflected light. The planets in your solar system are captives of your largest star, the sun. Like the planets, the Earth gives off no light of its own. When a planet shines brightly during the shadow hours, it is reflecting the sun's light. 
These ten planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Titan, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Which are your calculations of the planets? However, you shall know the truth. Now, let me continue. You have the Sun and you have the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Earth is the third planet from the Sun, which is 93 million miles away. And the 93rd attribute of Allah is El Nawar, meaning light. He is called the light of the heaven and the earth. Earth, which is the sun, the true light of the heaven and the earth, simply Ra or Ray, said Ray as in the sun's rays. The sun is the light, the 93rd attribute, and the number 93 million miles is the distance, and this is no coincidence. The sun is the bright morning star, which the planet Venus is also known as. Venus is often referred to as a star on account of its dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide, which reflects solar radiation and causes a very bright visual effect. The circumference of the planet Earth, which is the circle around it, is 24,896 miles. That varies because, as you know, your planet expands and contracts seasonally. There is a universal equinox and an earthly equinox. Equinox simply being when the length of the day and the shadow hour are equal, coming from the Latin aquion optium, aqui, equi, and nox, noct, night. The planet Earth goes around the sun, called so from the Latin word soul meaning sun and are from the Hittite deity Arena, goddess of the sun, which is the center of this solar system in 365 Earth days. This varies because the hours in a day are not really 24, but rather 23 hours, 56 minutes and 6 seconds. You would calculate this as one day when in reality it varies. The moon moves around the planet in 354 Earth days. Again, the moon cycle varies and you call that one lunar year. So now you have this motion of the moon around the planet and your planet around the sun. You have the whole galaxy or solar system, central solar, with systematic bodies moving around it. It moves around a larger mass every 24,000 years. Of course, this varies in an equinox. And you have precession of the equator needle. It spins one complete circle every 26,000 years on its axis. Precession is the motion of the axis of a spinning body, such as the wobble of a spinning top. When there is an external force acting on the axis, it's a slow slow gyration of Earth's axis around the pole of the elliptic, caused mainly by the gravitational pull of the Sun, Moon, and other planets on the Earth's equatorial bulge. From the Latin precessus, precession, from the past particle of procedo, meaning to go before, your equinox varies from 24,000 to 24,896 years. The planetal Earth positioned itself in the location of the revolution of Earth in the year 1970 which was the end of the third cycle as you know it. The end of the moon cycle of water and the birth of the sun cycle of ether, which was also the beginning of this writing, which was sent to renew your earth story. Make note, there is no such word as their story, only history, his story, which he says of us, and mystery, my story, which we say of us. When the Euro-American is making reference to the story of the original woody-haired beings, Moors, they refer to it as history meaning his story and when making reference to their story it's called a mystery my story because they really don't have a beginning in the origin of things be not arrogant of our knowledge take counsel with the ignorant as well as the wise for the limits of knowledge in any field has never been set and no one has ever reached them Wisdom is rarer than emeralds, and yet they are found amongst the women who gather at the grindstones. Be diligent as long as you live. Always do more than is commanded of you. Do not misuse your time while following your heart, for it is offensive to the soul to waste one's time. As you can see, the wise Riskians, the Anunnaki, have made land to equal one mile per year, and the circumference of the planet Earth is 24,896 miles. It takes 24,896 years for that cycle to take place. The wise round the figure off to four cycles of 6,000 years, which you can call one equinox and age. The other 
years are in constant speed in movement of the planet, making it right and exact. They, the elders, have made land one mile to equal each year, of which time is to renew our history or our story. What happens is we have four cycles of 6,000 years. In this cycle called an equinox, 24,000. Thus, you will see that a single cycle has gone, and now we're into a quad cycle. Overstand that. Then we have an epoch of 50,000 years. By that I mean the quad cycle, which is this. Assuming your sun and your planet is moving, it doesn't move perfectly around. It moves in an egg-shaped motion and oval. It is broken up into points, one, two, three, and four. There are two points where the planet is far away from the sun, called solstices, which mark the two times when the sun is seen during the day, the longest and the shortest times of the year, with sol relating to the sun. For thus, you have four seasons, one winter, two spring, three summer, and four fall, called the seasons or sea suns, the child of the sea who lived here before Adam's creation. They lived beneath the sea called the deep, and watched the Elohim create and make that which was good, all determined by the water. Thus you have sea suns, sons of the sea. Hummings are also a sea people, living in an atmosphere of air, which is water. First, from water of seamen, sea men, to the sack of the womb, to the atmosphere of air, which is water and the human body, which is free force water, the four suns of water. Now, that is just the planet and its motion around the sun. But note, when we take your solar system and cause it to revolve around a larger mass, the universe, there are also four periods. The furthest periods from the sun are called the silver periods, or the silver ages. That is the moon cycle. You have two silver or moon cycles. Because of the magnetic pull that the sun has, the Earth's elliptic motion speeds up and slows down and is elliptic, or the great annual path of the sun as seen from the earth. Your planet is not going around and around at the same speed as you may think. You will see that each one of these periods, because of the number 24, has been divided into four 6,000 year cycles. The first 6,000 year period was from the first silver moon cycle, which was the first cycle that the earth was furthest away from the sun, to the first gold cycle, which was the first cycle that the earth was closest to the sun. The second 6,000 year period was from the first gold sun to the second silver moon. The third 6,000 year period is from the second silver moon to the second gold sun, and the fourth and final 6,000 year period is going to be from the second gold sun back to the beginning of the very first silver moon period, from light back to the pure supreme balancement of blackness. In the fourth cycle, the Luciferian race made war upon the Anunnaki of the pure green light. The Anunnaki Elohim triumph over the race of Jinn, as Anu had done over his brother Alelu, who descended to the seventh, the blue planet inward, then called Tiamat, and after his defeat, Anu ascended up to the throne of Nibiru. Murdoch captured one of the Jinn who was under the age of maturity, named Balas Iblis, meaning despaired or rebellious one. His other name was Lucifer, being the liberated Luciferian. Balas was educated amongst the Anunnaki, and he improved by degree so much that he was honored and made a teacher of the Anunnaki. You must remember that Lucifer, being one of the most rare Luciferians, was almost all in all polarized, meaning he had two conflicting natures, being part Anunnaki and part reptilian. Lucifer was a product of a mixed marriage, being the son of two beings. The reptilian tarnish raped the Anunnaki Melita, which made Lucifer part reptilian and part Anunnaki. This is why he is called the serpent that spoke beside the tree in the enclosed garden of delight, located in what is called today Bali. Thus, there were beings who appeared to have a compromising attitude or personality. Yet it was Lucifer who appeared to be headstrong and have a disagreeable nature and an uncompromising attitude or personality. However, from his loins came Chaparians called the Giborim, the majestic or mighty ones. The strength of the Luciferians made them able to better deceive the seed of Adam by their physical human-like appearance. He Balas inspired to become the guiding light, the ruler, the sultan of all the stars of the heaven, and the prince of the cherub garib in his heart. He sought the very throne of Anu, 
and you reigned over a court of great splendor. There was a place with an artificial garden sculpted with semi-precious stones. There Anu resided with his wife and half-sister, Antum, Antu, six concubines, eighty children, of which fourteen were by Antum, one prime minister, three commanders in charge of the Mu rocket ships, two commanders of the weapons, two great masters of written knowledge, one minister of the purse, two chief justices, two chief scribes, and five assistant scribes, all of which Ballas wanted to rule. Ballas was called Samael in short, with the vapor of the self-complacency and conceit, which is the real nature of Ballas. Next, he wanted to scale the skies and try and control and rule all of the stars, the Arwayans, the angelic hosts of the heavens. Often he would incite unnecessary arguments, pretending about his excellence, by means of deceitful illusions and diabolical stratagems. Once, some of the company of the agreeable Lenunakai were going to have a look at the preserved tablet, the holiest of holy scriptures, upon which contained the record of the past and the future, called the Manure, the Illuminated Records, or the Akasha Records. On their return, Ballas perceived marks of grief on their foreheads, and asked them for the cause of their grief. They replied, this day we have obtained the information from the tablet that one of the Anunakai Garabut Cherubi, those who are near, the companions of Mikael, meaning who dares to be like El, of the mansion of the Eternal, shall soon be afflicted with rejection and everlasting damnation. Everyone is afraid for his own sake, and we request you to pray that the guardian Anunakai may not allow any of us to fall this misfortune. We are very much terrified and dismayed. Then Valis answered them, saying, Let none of this even disturb you, for that judgment refers neither to you nor to me. I have years ago been aware of it, and have not communicated it to anyone. The pride and arrogance of Ballas did not allow him to weigh the words of the Anunakai. At that time, the blessed proclamation reached the hearing of the inhabitants. The echo of the success of Kadmon Zakar reached their ears. On hearing the news, their depression was ejaculating from them, and that permeated their being from the kindled anger of the unhallowed disagreeable to a Ballas. He spoke, saying, How can mortals created of dust claim to be a being of superiority, and I am created before him of fire from the previous sun cycle. So the Anunakai, having guessed the event to come from the sons of Tarnish, said to El Elo, Will you make a mischief maker in it, one who shall shed blood? This was repeated by the Kuthites on the planet Earth, by the command of Anu El Elo, by Murdoch son of Enki and Dankina, the grandson of Anu, who would descend to the fourth planet, advised and warned the race of Natas, who had gone astray from the straight path. This took place before the physical war was waged with them. It was a mental war. The agreeable Anunakai were victorious. This, however, would not be the last time that the forces of the benevolent, agreeable, and disagreeable, malevolent would do battle. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using al Kalum the All. Tablet 3, the story of Lucifer, 19 times 1 equals 19. Hello, my children. Let me warn you about Lucifer and his host. Do not fall into the delicacies of Lucifer and his host. O you who are faithful, reject Lucifer and his companions. He, Lucifer, comes in many forms to trick and deceive you, the faithful ones. Lucifer, the evil reptilian, is also called Halal, or Samael, was number three of his order. When he was commissioned by Murdoch, he was designated as one of the 100 most able and brilliant personalities in a more than 700,000 of his kind. However, from such a magnificent beginning, through evil and error, he encouraged disagreeable acts. Lucifer was so self-nourished to the point of self-deception, he actually persuaded himself that his contemplation of rebelliousness was actually good for the system, if not the universe. Lucifer became insincere and evil evolved into deliberate and willful disagreeable acts. Lucifer believed that the universal father did not exist and that physical gravity and space energy were inherent in the universe. He believed that the sustainer was a myth that was invented by the Seraphir to enable them to maintain rule over the universe in their father's name. 
Lucifer believed the universal system should be autonomous or self-governing and independent. He protested against the right of Murdoch, who also bore the title Mikael, who dares to be like hell, the grandson of the Most High Anu, the Heavenly One. He was willing to acknowledge Murdoch as his creator father, but not his rightful ruler. He had claimed that the whole plan of worship was a clever scheme to glorify the Elohim. He had totally rebelled against the order of Anu, the Most High, the Highest, and caused mischief and war in the heavens. This was not the first war. The first war was with his father Hambaba, or Tarnash, against Murdoch. Tablet 4, The War in the Skies, 19 times 3 equals 57. Lo, the first conflict was in the skies of Iliun, the 19th galaxy, also called the Great Galaxy, known as the Place on the High, by the etheric records called the Akasha records are kept. The first conflict was when Tarnish, also known as Hanbaba, son of Tagut and Sin, tried to take over Iliun. Dallas wanted to rule the stars and the Inunakai of the skies. Tarnish was second in command under Murdoch, son of Enki and Damkina. Tarnish felt that Murdoch was not qualified for leading the fleets of his grandfather Anu. During this time, the planet Titan, which is considered a moon of the planet Saturn, was the home base of Humbaba, who was also called Cronus, and Saturn, husband of Ops, companion of the fire goddess Lua, father of Picus. His reigning period was called Saturnalia, and to this day it's celebrated between December 17th and December 25th. Those under Cronus were claiming Anshar, foremost of the heavens, which is today called Saturn, which is the astrological sign of Anshar, father of Anu, as their home base. The ring planet named Saturn rotates very quickly. It takes 10 hours and 40 minutes for it to turn once on its axis. Saturn bulges even more at its equator than Jupiter. Saturn has a very deep atmosphere, which is made up mainly of hydrogen and helium, with some methane and ammonia. At the top of this atmosphere, the temperature is about minus 300 Fahrenheit. This low temperature causes ammonia in the outer atmosphere to freeze, forming high altitude haze. More and more space probes from NASA are being sent into space due to the curiosity of mankind. They are trying to rediscover what took place long ago in the heavens. Space probes to Saturn are being sent to various planets and moons such as the Cassini that was sent in 1997 AD, filled with 72 pounds of high radioactive plutonium. The probe being named after Giovanni Domenico Cassini, an Italian-born French astronomer. The planet Titan was the home base of the disagreeable Anunnaki, which were divided into 12 continents. The Greeks named them 1. Oceanus, 2. Prius, 3. Coeus, 4. Iapetus, 5. Cronus, 6. Hyperion, 7. Rhea, 8. Nemocene, 9. Thea, 10. Themis, 11. Tethys, 12. Phoebe. The disagreeable Anunnaki made Titan an alternative when they were cast out and the capital was Phoebe, from whence you get the word phobia, the irrational fear of a specific thing or situation to avoid or dislike or an aversion. The space satellite Phobos of Mars was also named after the 12th continent Phoebe of Titan. This is the mystical 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Ishmael, the 12 signs of the zodiac under the Olympian deities. Zeus as Jesus, born in the 12th month of the Gorgrian calendar with 12 disciples, who became Jar Zeus and Yeshua to Jehovah. However, some of these disagreeable Anunnaki took residence on one of the three continents of the planet of Risk, the continent called Zarantu. They were restricted from visiting the other two continents, Danaria and Kusmusta, without a Riskian escort. There was immigration laws set up. However, Riskians can visit all three continents unescorted. Zarantu was under the command of Tarnish, who wanted total control of Risk. However, Murdoch was chosen by Anu to lead the fleet, and this caused a disagreement between Murdoch and Tarnish. Anu's decision for Murdoch to lead Anu's fleets caused a disagreement between Murdoch and Tarnish, which caused a small war and a clash on the planet Risk, which comes from the word Razaka meaning to provide. Tarnish, also known as Hambaba, attacked the planet Risk with a shield depleter, aerosol, a gaseous suspension of fine solid or liquid particles. This substance can today be found in such produce as paint, detergent or an insecticide. 
packaged under pressure with gaseous propellant for release and spray of fine particles. Today, the children of the Luciferians are using the same tactics here on Earth to deplete the ozone or shield this planet. The aerosol bomb of tarnish comes from the root word aero or air, simply meaning air, atmosphere, aeroballistics, and a gas. Aerosol from the Greek word for air meaning air, and the word soul meaning sun. So you get air O for omega, ending, and soul sun. Just like the destruction of the atmosphere of the sons of risk, this same epidemic is also being done here on Earth. This aerosol bomb of tarnish caused the natural atmosphere of risk to deplete. The Riskians had no protection from the damaging rays of the three suns. The atmosphere was dwindling away, and many Riskians departed to other galaxies. The rays of the three suns, Itu, Shamus, and Afsu, had put a hole in our ozone layer, as you now have a hole in your ozone layer over Australia, expanding daily. The Risk, the eighth planet, was the heart and source of that tri-solar system, and thus was the most effective as Earth is the heart of this solar system. All three suns have a magnetic pull that causes a tighter and heavier rotation of its planets. The energy field on risk was starting to increase and the whole was starting to lose its color. So the Riskians needed to build a protection, a dome of gold dust to protect the planet from the damaging ultraviolet rays. Gold reflects the sun's rays. Pure gold can easily be beaten or hammered into a thickness thinner than paper and can be stretched for more than 60 miles long. They can be made thinner than any metal. This is one of the reasons why gold is a very precious metal and is greatly valued by Hummins today. It is one of the softest metals and it is a good conductor of electricity and heat and it can be easily vaporized better than any metal. Gold is also capable of reflecting intense heat and holds up under any condition. Having this and much more advanced knowledge about pure gold, other metals and minerals, the Riskians knew exactly what they were coming for. Gold, having existed since the creation of the planet Earth as you know it, can be found deep in the Earth's crust, volcanic ash as well as in vast oceans of this planet. Anu and other Elohim knew that the gold of the Earth was good long before the birth of man. The Riskians had to abort risk and go to Kessel Orion, which is a six-star, six-major sun constellation, thus having hundreds of galaxies. The Riskians took residence in the planets and star constellations of Nazareth, Aish, Actoris, and Kama Pleiades, making them also temporary homes. Exploration was necessary, thus the grafting of explorers became a necessity. This need gave birth to the Ramadians, later to become known as Greys. These extraterrestrial biological entities, EBEs, were grafted from various extraterrestrial species. They were emotionless and without reproductive capabilities. They served but one purpose, and that is as explorers and worthy servants. Their explorations took them to Lachman, Mars, and Sheshki called the Moon, where their plans for constructions of cylinder crafts called Shams were built. This took place after the collision with the crafts called the Ninga Fleet, also known as the Four Winds. They transported gold dust to the moon, then to Namiru, and from there onto planet Risk. When this was completed, these beings were given their freedom. They chose Pleiades and Actorus as their home. Malevolent Luciferian-type reptilians chose to conquer them and enslave them by performing biological experiments, thereby creating hybrids of them, and they used them as explorers to this planet, and they still control some of them to this very day. Those that took their freedom reside in the Canis Major star constellation near Sept, also called Sophis, which is Sirius, the dog star, having two major and six minor suns, Zeta Reticuli, just south of the Orion Belt. They, these greys, sought union with beings of Earth, having a common enemy, Lucifer, who controls 70 of their empires. As a great warrior, the Riskians engaged Murdoch's services. They needed somebody who was a warrior type to go and seek out the gold and transport it by Nibiru to Risk. The Riskians were being ambushed by reptilians, and at that time Murdoch was a disagreeable Yahwehan, or what you would call a warrior. So he was chosen to lead this mission, which first had to be started by attacking Humbaba. Murdoch was given the Tilu weapon, a red beam of light, or a light beam ray gun, from the gemstone Sardius, a laser that was created by his grandfather Anu to stop Tarnish in his disagreeable ways. He succeeded in his mission. The gold was being transported by cylinder-shaped crafts, 30 to 60 miles in size. They were assembled on Lachman Mars and parked on the dark side of Sheshki the Moon. 
afternoon, the smaller craft were one and a half mile by two miles. They had androids called Robotoids that would scout out the mineral of the planet controlled by the Ramadian. So, Humbaba and his followers who supported him, which was one third of risk, were cast out and was never to return there. Humbaba had taken residence in the planet Titan, which is considered a moon of Saturn, with a breed of reptilian beings. The largest of Saturn's 18 moon satellites is Titan. The diameter of Titan, including its atmosphere, is 3,400 miles. This satellite in your solar system has a thick atmosphere and is about two and one and a half times as dense as that of Earth. Titan's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, with small amounts of methane and other hydrogen compounds. They, Humbaba and his followers, were mammalia, any various warm-blooded reptile animals of the class of mammals, from late Latin mammalis, from the breast, from Latin mama, meaning breast. This mixture bred human-looking snakes called serpent people who speak with a whisper. Because of the damage that Tarnish had done to the planet Risk, the Riskians started expeditions looking for gold. Murdoch and a group of the Anunnaki were chosen to seek this gold, which they knew could be found in abundance on the planet Tiamat, meaning Maiden of Life. They made many trips in a mothercraft called Nibiru, which means Planet of the Crossing, or that which crosses the skies. So Murdoch found minerals in Tiamat, and he set up a base on Lahmu, meaning the deity of war, today called Mars. He also went to the dark side of Shesky, where people had already lived under the rule of Luna or Lunar, who originally came from Gaga Pluto. The planet Gaga Pluto at the time was an emissary of Anshar Saturn before it was thrown into its own wobbling orbit and when one of the satellites of Nibiru crashed into the planet Tiamat, now called Earth. Those were some of the planets that were on Nibiru's regular routes. The planet Tiamat was a regular stop off as well, along with the planet Mars, which to the Romans is known as the father of Romulus and Remus. He was a consort of Rhea Silvia, the god of war originally called Mars Sylvanus, god of desolate places. Sil Venice was symbolized as a half-man, half-goat, the father of war, symbolic of the ancient Egypt deity Ra, the symbol of the ram deity of the sun, fertility of life and growth, which is pronounced as Ray, as in the rays of the sun. The reverse of the word Mars is rams, and the inversion of the word Mars is wars, a symbol of blood, called the red planet, also called Almiric, the long arrow symbol of war. Other names for it is Alcanus and Abara. Mars's distance from the Sun is 142 million miles. Its diameter is 40,022 miles. The time Mars takes to orbit the Sun is 680 days. The time Mars spends on its axis is 24 hours and 37 minutes. Its tilt on its axis is 25.2 degrees. Mars shines in the sky with a reddish color and is sometimes called the red planet. The orbit of Mars is more oval than that of Earth. Mars's thin atmosphere is made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide. Temperature on the planet's equator may occasionally reach 60 Fahrenheit. However, during the shadow hours, temperatures can drop to nearly minus 202 Fahrenheit. Tons and tons of rocket fuel could be synthesized out of Mars air, making traveling to and from Mars even easier than trips to the moon. The Martian soil also contains an abundance of gypsum, which can be baked by adding some Martian water and iron-rich dust. On Earth, this is cement. It has two moons, one called Phobos, 19 miles at its widest point, and it circles the planet at a distance of 2,462 miles. Phobos completes its orbit in about 7.5 hours, which is less time than it takes Mars to turn once on its axis. The other, Deimos, is 12 miles at its widest point, and it circles Mars at a distance of 14,700 miles. Both Phobos and Deimos were born by meteorites, captured as asteroids in its orbit. Here you will find prototypes of Homo sapiens, thus the word parthenogenic which explains that at this site, where there are pyramids and ruins of temples of the Anunnaki, were used for the cloning of Homo erectus to Homo sapiens, called the Adama Project. But this is where the face of Cadmon can be found. Today, the site is called Sidonia, or Sidonia from Sidon, the first son of Canaan, father of the Albinos, the cursed seed of Ham.
out. Sidon is and means the fortress and is fortified. His wife was Jinnah. This is why today astronomers are interested in the planet Mars because they have discovered that life existed there before and that there is a possibility that they might be able to bring human life to that planet again with its Martian atmosphere. Chapter 1. Begin all acts and thinking by using Alkaline the All. Tablet 5. The Journey of Nibiru. 19 times 7 equals 133. Lo, the planet Tiamat was a site used for excavating different metals, elements and minerals such as plutonium, chlorine, chlorophyll, ammonia, gold, platinum and silver as well as scanning the ocean floors for other elements that were beneficial to these beings in other planets. In the depths of the ocean of this planet Earth are some of the most valuable resources for human life, such as food such as kelp, different types of fish and energy sources such as iodine. In these waters are an abundance of dissolved gases, such as nitrogen, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Other substances are nitrates, phosphates, which are needed by plants for photosynthesis. Silicon dioxide is necessary in the building of skeletal materials in some marine organisms. Remaining elements that are essential to marine life include iron, manganese, cobalt and copper. Several mineral resources lie on the ocean floor and in solution above it such as salt, magnesium and bromide. Seawater contains all the dissolved substances necessary for the growth of plant and animal life. Other beings know of these resources and thus they have made many visits, taking what they have excavated back to their homes and they continue to make visits on the planet and even live under the seas. Tiamat was also used as a hunting ground and resort. Beings would intergalactically travel from planet to planet, doing what was called planetary shopping. Some of the planets in this galaxy were most frequently visited because life existed there in various forms, such as Lachmun, meaning deity of war, now called Mars, Kishar, meaning foremost of the firmaments, now called Jupiter, including many others in Orion, meaning skies or heaven, sixth star constellation, Kama, meaning to be wealthy, which is the Pleiades constellation, having seven stars, and Aish, to lend aid to help, also known as the Plowman, Octaurus, as well as Clarion, meaning clear, just to name a few. The boundless universes that come from all types of origin, and your planet Earth held the most abundant of life sources, which is why all kind of beings visit frequently. Now let me continue. On one of these routes to the planet Earth, the planet craft Nibiru, meaning planet of the crossing, also called Murdoch, was making a routine trip which was then on an orbit that took 1,024 years, short of an equinox of each Earth time, which was 25,920 year orbit called an AMS by the Anunnaki. This craft being four times the size of the planet Tiamat, whose diameter was 15,852 before the splitting, which was cut in two equal halves and Nibiru's diameter being 63,408, the ship Nibiru came in search of other planets that were rich in natural resources and minerals to take back to the planet Risk to protect it from the damaging ultraviolet rays. And what would make you understand what ultraviolet rays are? Ultraviolet, or relating to the range of invisible radiation, wavelengths from about 4 nanometers onto the border of X-ray region to about 380 nanometers just beyond the violet in the visible spectrum. We're looking at the word ultra, meaning beyond, from the Latin ultra, from ultra meaning beyond, and the word violet, meaning the hue of the short wave end of the visible spectrum, invoked in the human observer by radiant energy, with wavelengths of approximately 380 to 420 nanometers. Any group of colors, reddish blue in hue, that may vary in the lightness and saturation from the Middle English, from Old French, violetta, diminutive of viol, from Latin viola.
As for red, the hue of the long wave end of the visible spectrum, it has evoked in the human observer a radiant energy with wavelengths of approximately 630 to 750 nanometers. Any of the group of colors that may vary in lightness and saturation and whose hue resembles that of the life liquid called blood, one of the additive or light primaries. From the Middle English from Old English read, and as for the color blue, the hue of that proportion of visible spectrum lying between green, which is yellow and blue and indigo, which is blue and violet, and is evoked in the human observer by radiant energy with wavelengths of approximately 450 to 490 nanometers. Any of the group of colors that may vary in lightness and saturation, one of the additive or light primaries from Middle English blue, from Old French bleu, of Germanic origin. As for the word ray, it's a thin line or narrow beam of light or other radiant energy, radiance light. On the prism it appears as purple, ranging from violet to red. And now with an understanding of ultraviolet rays, you must be able to grasp the damage that it was doing on risk and is doing here on Earth. The danger is the destruction of the ozone. As it happened there, it is also happening here. What is ozone? A blue gaseous allotrope of oxygen, O3, formed naturally from diatomic oxygen by electric discharge or exposure to ultraviolet radiation. It is unstable, powerfully bleaching, poisonous oxidizing agent with a pungent irritating odor, used to deodorize air, purify water, treat industrial waste and as a bleach. Fresh pure air, from German ozone, from Greek ozone, Neuter present past particle ozone, meaning to smell. So in order for the Riskians to protect their planet, they sought out gold. The gold of this planet is good. This great planet-sized ship Nibiru came nearer to your solar system, traveling at the speed of light, 186,272 miles per second. Yet it is found to be exactly 186,282.396 miles per second. Or... 299,792.458 kilometers per second. It came from Ilium, the 19th galaxy, a tri-solar system having three suns, also called the Great Galaxy, known as the Place on High, called Heaven or Jenna. On a journey through the stars that took 25,920 years, a year is also called an arm by the Sumerians, who were taught by the Inimakai. This great ship Nibiru, as it was later known, was a mother ship, and Nibiru at the time held 12 smaller cylinder ships called Shams that were to be launched out from it when Nibiru reached its destination. Nibiru was equipped with four separate atmospheres, and what would make you understand what four atmospheres are? They are, one, outside of the spheres, where there is no air and there is no atmosphere, Nibiru is able to adjust to that environment. Two, when you come into this dome-like planet, where there is oxygen and air, Nibiru is capable of adjusting to that environment. Three, when you go into the Antarctica, you would have to take your crafts into the glaciers. Nibiru is capable of adjusting to that environment. Four, when you'd have to take your craft beneath the sea, Nibiru is also capable of adjusting to that environment. But that is the four separate atmospheres that all the crafts titled Nibiru as part of a Nibiru fleet is capable of adjusting to. That is, they are capable of adjusting to all atmospheres of changes, such as tar, earth, Moo water, Nefu air, and set fire. The command to activate this is simply Tamu Nefu set. Nibiru and all of its crafts were also equipped with four separate magnetic fields, which is a person, a place, and an object, or a situation that exerts attraction. 1. Nibiru is capable of being magnetized or attracted by a magnet, meaning 2. To operate by means of magnetism, such as a magnetic recorder. 3 to relate to the magnetic poles of the earth such as a magnetic compass bearing four have an unusual power or ability to attract a gravity form of magnetism from the whirling vortex of each planet at 30 degrees and its magnetic attractions, creating a magnetic grid, the flow of electricity when an object comes in contact with the pulling or attracting powers, and the magnetic attraction by appearance, emotion, or desire. The grand mothership Nibiru can hold many thousands of crown-shaped ships 
but this mission only had 2,880 crown-shaped shams. It also had a fleet of 24 crystal cities with crystal-like domes, giving them the ability to break down light as a prism would and be able to make use of the energy. It has solar panels that's the size of a pin's head or less than that and can generate millions and millions of megawatts of energy as well. As Nibiru passed by various suns or stations set up in the galaxy, Nibiru drew an energy charge from them. Nibiru was set up for holographic interdimensional transport, that is, it was capable of cloning itself hologrammically to appear in more than one place at the same time, making it virtually impossible to determine which is the hologrammic projection from the original. Nibiru is capable of traveling distance from point to point or through space and time interdimensionally. It can go through time, future or past, without interfering with the principle of now or then, and it is manned by 144,000 crew members headed by 24 elite beings called Yahwehans, 12 Yah agreeable and 12 way. A house or a laptop? Which one do you think is worth more? Well, definitely not the house, because it not only costs disagreeable that stood seven feet tall. However, on this flight, the craft Nibiru had to first pass by the planet Ea, which means he whose house is water, and is now called Neptune, as it did many times before. The planet Ea Neptune is a twin to the planet Anu Uranus. By twin planet, I mean that Neptune is very similar and in some aspects identical to the planet Uranus. The planet Uranus was originally called Kakab Shinama, the planet which is the double. Uranus is also influenced by the gravity of Neptune. The gases that made up the atmospheres of Neptune and Uranus are exactly the same. The sizes of Neptune and Uranus are similar. Their colors are identical and their rotational times are similar. Uranus being 17 hours in Earth's time and Neptune's being 16.5 hours. The planet Uranus practically rotates laying down. So the size, if looked at from the wrong angle, can surely be mistaken. Uranus tilts at the extreme angle of 98 degrees. You could almost say that the planet lies on its side as it travels around the sun. This means that the north and south polar regions of Uranus experience alternate periods of day and shadow hour and summer and winter, each of which is up to 42 Earth years long. The temperature of this planet Uranus on the side that is hidden from the sun is the same as on the side that is facing the sun. As Nibiru came nearer to Neptune, its gravitational pull caused electrical storms on the planet on that Friday afternoon at 1300 hours of Earth time some 24 billion years ago of Earth of time and caused Nibiru to go slightly off its orbit. As the craft Nibiru passed by Ea Neptune, the planet Anu Uranus came from behind the planet Neptune and it caused the appearance of a bulge. And that bulge pulled on Nibiru's orbit and caused the great ship Nibiru to begin to wobble in its orbit from fear of crashing. This happened because the planet Uranus was not originally seen in the solar system when Nibiru made its first visits. Uranus moving from behind Neptune caused Nibiru to veer in its own original path in order not to hit Uranus and made it collide into another planet called Maldek, also called Vulcan. The original name for the planet Vulcan is Maldek. Maldek was between Lachmu Mars and Kishar Jupiter. Maldek was 27,500 miles in diameter. Maldek had a population of billions living under the seas in the sub-cities of Karna, which was occupied by the Maldekians, and Veda, which was occupied by the Troglodytes. Maldek also had two moons. This was the planet of Mathematics or troglodytes, dragons and vortex. The troglodytes average height is three and a half to four and a half feet and their heads are extremely large. These were the slaves. However, the rulers of the Maldekians are very large in size, from seven to nine feet in height. Scales of multiple colors in which they are shed like all other reptilians. They also lay eggs for reproduction. The troglodytes have two round eyes without pupils and no ears or protruding noses, just two small holes in the nose area. Their mouths are slits without lips. The troglodytes are hairless and have no teeth. The troglodytes' hands have four webbed fingers and no thumbs. The troglodytes live totally underwater in great cities with many great biologists. Because they live underwater, if the planet sped up, it wouldn't affect them because gravity is different underwater, meaning 
Gravity is the force that the Earth exerts on an object. The force of gravity is relatively constant all over the surface of the Earth, except for in a few places like the equator and very slightly at different altitudes. Many people think, for instance, if a steel ball was dropped from a building and a cotton ball, that the steel ball would fall a lot faster when the cotton ball only lags slightly behind. So the force was still constant. Water is denser than air, so objects move slower through the water than air. The impact of the crash affected the beams on the surface of the planet of Malbec and not underneath the water because the water is more dense and would slow down the object. So the impact would be less damaging and the shock of the impact would be less severe. However, it was daylight, so most of the beings had come on land. All of the beings that could have negotiated were dead due to the crash. The only beings that survived were the ones under the seas, which were the military and the warriors, who were looking for a chance to fight anyway. Nibiru had no way of contacting the beings on the planet Maldek to let them know that it was an accident and not a deliberate attack. Telepathic communications were forbidden to prevent interference by other telepathic, disagreeable beings. This was because the Maldekians were not part of the Interplanetary Confederation. Their star fleet of warriors were a group of reptilians who bore the symbol of a reptile who called themselves the Ninga, meaning warrior, launched an attack. Thinking that the planet Maldek had been attacked, four fighters ships of the Ninga fleet launched out and it went off its orbit into the universe and attacked with the intentions of destroying Nibiru. These four ships equipped with high explosives created of plutonium from Maldek's star fleet called Ninga managed to escape Maldek as Nibiru passed by and followed in Nibiru's path. Nibiru put up its four magnetic force fields which were created by Anu and given to Murdoch and destabilized the four attacking ships. Nibiru created the magnetic cube called the Ka'aba. These four great ships called the Ninga fleet moved on as four powerful winds that were trapped by Nibiru's force field and unable to break loose. Maldek is now referred to as the Lost Planet. The four fighter ships of the Ninga fleet are called the North Wind, South Wind, East Wind and West Wind. These four fighter ships that originally surrounded Nibiru and appeared to launch an attack were now trapped. The great ship Nibiru activated its four magnetic force fields, incapacitating the ships. All of their controls and equipment ceased to function. A force field was put up and they were trapped in the environment of Nibiru. Its new wobbly satellites were caught in Nibiru's gravitational pull and began to circle making four whirlwinds. Nibiru immediately launched two ships to return to Iliun to inform the elders of the incident in case of the need for assistance. Nibiru proceeded to move counterclockwise from the planets in the solar system. Nibiru pulled in towards Anshar, which means foremost of the heavens, now called Saturn, and its force fields kissed off the planet and its gravitational pull caused Nibiru to veer off its own orbit. The three satellites were added to Nibiru's force field called the Evil Wind, Whirlwind and Matchless wind. The orbit of Nibiru was originally on a 25,920 year orbit called an arms. It shifted into a new orbit of 3,600 years called a Shah. Its orbit was caught in this solar system always to return. Then Nibiru bounced off the planet Rum Titan, which now surrounds Anshar Saturn, and sped up its motion, creating the Saturn's rings, referred to as the Necklace of Saturn. At this point, Gaga Pluto was released from its natural orbit around the Sun and was pulled into the direction of Lathamun Mars and Lathamun Venus. The path of Nibiru was now bent even more towards the center of the solar system, directly towards Tiamat, which means Maiden of Life, now called Earth. As it moved into your solar system, Nibiru caused problems amongst the other planets in the solar system by pulling their moons. Nibiru making one complete spin threw the wings off into space. The approach of Nibiru began to disturb Tiamat and it alarmed the beings of Tiamat that something was entering their atmosphere, causing volcanic eruptions, storms, hurricanes and floods. Tiamat was forced to launch 11 ships headed directly for this bright gleaming or what appeared to be a planet entering its airspace. It was Nibiru. The star fleet of 11 ships from Tiamat was led by Kinu, the Great Emissary, which was once ruled by the Maldekian deity Luna. 
the great ship Nibiru had seven warships accompanying her, and they were launched at the eleven ships that were launched from Tiamat. Kingu was the name of the head defense force of Tiamat, and it later became the name of the imperfect planet, now called a moon, one of many moons which was originally accompanying the planet of Tiamat before the crash of the satellites of Nibiru. The eleven ships which were launched from Tiamat and Nibiru were immediately detected by the force field of Nibiru and eliminated. One of the four satellites that came with Nibiru from Maldek, called the North Wind, was lined directly for Tiamat. The impact of the North Wind caused Tiamat to split into two parts because of the high explosives that the ship contained called plutonium. The hole which the North Wind bore into Tiamat caused the upper part of Tiamat to wallop in its orbit, setting large portions of it on fire. The North Wind then came back around, shattering the half into pieces, making comets, of which Halley's Comet is one, and asteroids. Comets coming from the Greek word cometus, long-haired star, from comb, hair. The length of time a comet takes to complete its orbit is known as its period. Some comets have periods of less than seven years. Comets are considered a part of the solar system since they never leave the limits of the same system. The comet's tail always points away from the sun due to the pressure of the sun's light on the dust particles and it's usually 5,000 miles in length. The comets are often caught by a planet's gravitational pull which causes them to shift from their course. Many of the pieces of the comet that caught on fire form the asteroid belt that is in the center of the solar system. The east wind, another tremendous ship from Maldek, comes with Nibiru from Maldek swung around and put a hole straight through the upper half of the planet. The planet Tiamat had turbulence and was unstable, while other planets nearby were still wobbling in their Why is this common yard weed helping thousands of people burn 62 pounds in three weeks? If you their orbits. Tiamat was pulled in many directions, on one side by the two larger planets Lachmu, now called Mars, and Kishar, foremost of the firmament's Jupiter, on one side, and the other two smaller planets Lachamu, Venus, and Mumu, one who was born, Mercury, on its other side, all pulling and tugging. The Biru seven ships broke off into two separate fleets, and first four circling the planet Tiamat, which is now called Ki, creating a net light web, which was a magnetic magnetic field. One of the three warships from the second part of the fleet of seven from Nibiru, located on the outskirts of the force fields, then launched a bright flame of light, much like ball lightning. The ball lightning was filled with brilliance and it pierced straight down into Tiamat, completely neutralizing Tiamat's electric and magnetic force fields. A portion of this massive ball of light which was launched by one of the three warships from Nibiru was called the West Wind and also known as the Evil Wind tore straight down as a ball of lightning into the center exploded and gouged out a large hollow space into the center of Tiamat. And the west wind became a tremendous 600 mile diameter sun called Sol and was trapped in place there with a sunscreen to direct the heat waves through the north pole away from the planet, creating the northern lights or what is called the aurora borealis, which are solar flares or sun flares. This ball of light now in the center of Tiamat was named Atsu, meaning one who exists from the beginning and the place was named Eshera. Three satellites launched off of Nibiru creating a tetrahedron four-sided force field of energy at a 19.5 degree angle around the new half of Tiamat with a hole through it and a smaller sun, Sol, also called Afsu Apsu, was placed inside Tiamat's center. Now, this newly formed planet called Tiamat, also key, New Earth, was trapped in its orbit where no planet had been orbiting before, protected by forces by the guidance of these ships while she healed herself. The 600 mile diameter sun called Sol, Atsu, traveled through the great hold called the Abyss for a distance of 3,963 miles to the center of the half of the planet Tiamat, which the west wind bore a hole through called Ki, now called Earth from the word Eridu. So, it was indeed one of the satellites of Nibiru called Winds from Maldek that crashed into Tiamat and not Nibiru itself. The Voltex troglodyte that manned the ships that crashed survived and thrived in the seas of this new planet called Ki, or Gaia, or even Gi, once called Tiamat, which much later became known as Earth from Eridu, starting the new restoration or reconstruction of life on Earth, including evolutionary process of plant and animal life. Now the last of the winds, the south winds,
crashed into Key and created the Grand Canyon and gave birth to another small planet in its own orbit and rotated around this newly formed planet Key, which became the moon that you see today, creating a lunar orbit called the Sheshki, meaning celestial deity who protects Earth, Key, and called Kingu, which had become the chief amongst them, ruled by Luna, which Murdoch Nibiru made shrink as a Dagai, mass of lifeless clay, and thrown into outer space to wobble in its own orbit. Deprived of its orbital momentum, Kingu was reduced to the status of a mere satellite, a moon, today known as Akeris, which is today known as the largest of the minor planets and or asteroids. The upper half of the planet Tiamat, which became oval-shaped after the moon had broken away, was now 7,926 miles in diameter and 24,896 miles in circumference, and it was set for replenishing or restoration on the part of the great star fleet responsible for its damage. The newly formed planet Ki was trapped in its orbit, protected by the forces sent from the guidance of the four ships that were part of the eleven of the fleet from Nibiru, of which two returned back to Ilion to inform them of what had happened. Now this new planet had two suns, one in its belly, 3,963 miles from its surface, creating an inner tropical environment, and the other sun, Shamash, which was 93 million miles away from Key's surface. Key was now trapped in its new orbit around the outer sun, Shamash, to create a year of 365 days. Thus, a new time zone was created for this new planet. The south wind crashing into Tiamat also created a black dust cloud to cut off Earth from the sun. Now you have two sets of planets separated by this asteroid belt, creating inner planets and outer planets. The inner planets were Moon, Mercury, Lachamu, Venus, Ki Earth, Sheshki Moon, Lachmu Mars, and the outer planets were Kishar Jupiter, Anshar Saturn, whose planet is Rum Titan, Anu Uranus, Ea Neptune, and now Usmin Pluto, previously called Gagar, separated by this asteroid belt, and the remains of the lost planet Maldek. So one half of the original Tiamat is an asteroid belt, and the other half is present on your planet called Ki Earth. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using El Kalun, the All. Tablet 6 The Origin of the Moon 19 times 3 equals 57 Lo, the creation of the planet we call the Moon today. You may ask, why are you calling the Moon a planet? That is because that's exactly what it is. Let's see. The word planet means a non-luminous celestial body larger than an asteroid or a comet, illuminated by light from a star, such as the Sun, around which it revolves. From the Middle English, from Old French, planete, from Late Latin, planeta, from Greek, planetes, variant from planes, planet, from planeste, meaning to wander. You shall see how the moon did just that, wandered off into space to become that which is called the moon today, or the month. It came about because of the Maldekian fighter ship from the Ninka fleet called the South Wind. The South Wind came crashing down into the planet Tiamat with plutonium, a highly explosive weapon. The word moon comes from the word monos, who was the Greek deity of sarcasm and pain, for the hurt that Luna felt, because he wanted to rule all of the stars of the heaven and earth, and his sarcasm in dealing with the Daeneas. Luna bore his plea as to his wish to rule the sun, moon and stars, and was voted down by the Yagigi. In his rejection because of his sarcasm, he became a deity amongst the Euro-Americans, who are some descendants of the Greeks and Romans. They will tell you that this name originated with them. However, the name Moon was adopted from the ancient Egyptian deity Monthu, the deity of Thebes, who fell into disfavour with the mortals due to royal politicking during the 11th dynasty. He was a lunar deity, where the Greeks stole their concept from. The planet Earth Ki was known as Tiamat. This explosion created what is called today the Grand Canyon, and gave birth to another small planet in its own orbit, rotating around the newly formed planet Ki. This newly formed planet was named Sheshki, meaning celestial deity who protects Earth Ki, now called the Moon, which created the lunar orbit around the planet Ki. It is now 283,900 miles from Earth.
The moon is now a bleak piece of the planet Earth. So if most of the water is dried on the moon, because its waters are on the Earth, it keeps pulling on the waters of this planet. The moon was not blasted enough to make a complete turn by itself while rotating around the planet Earth. Therefore, you never see the other side before it is again entering into the shade side of the planet Earth. There is a base called the Moon Base 12 up there. You just can't see it, and they don't want you to know about it. Human beings are living in dome homes, and there are big laboratories for mining on the Moon. So you have the evening tide pulling on the waters of the planet Earth. Without this process of water, all the vegetation would die. Sheshki was first covered with life and vegetation, just like Earth today. For instance, there are even certain radioactive elements found deep in the Earth that are found on the crust of the Moon. And this once being a thought of an irreality has now been confirmed by scientists on March the 5th, 1998, that there is ice on the Moon. There are pockets of ice crystals that have been found beneath the lunar surface by a robot survey spacecraft. The Lunar Prospector's Neutron Spectrometer sent data back indicating the presence of significant amounts of hydrogen distributed in the loose lunar soil at the bottom of the polar craters. The ice was found in the lunar south pole as well as in the craters of the north pole. All life died on Shesky because of the explosion of a warship that came from planet Maldek that got caught up in the gravitational pull of Nibiru and crashed into the planet Tiamat and caused the breaking away of a moon called Shesky. The female's menstrual cycle is approximately a 29 and a half day cycle which coincides with the four phases of the moon, making her symbol the square while the male symbol being the sun is a circle. The four quarters start from full to three-fourths, or from three-fourths to a half, or from a half to a full moon again. A secret name of the moon is Halal, meaning the crescent, a symbol of Diana who is also called Sin, symbol of Baphomet, from the French Baphomet, for Mohammedan, the five-pointed interlocking inverted star. The movement of the moon each cycle, 12 each year, that is three sets of four phases, and is the symbol of the five Ps, which are the roots of their laws, polytheism, politics, psychology, philosophy, and penal. This moon called Shesky, or Kama by the Mohammedans, is 2,160 miles, or about one-third the size of the planet Earth, which is 7,926 miles, and is composed basically of the same minerals that have been analyzed from rocks brought back from the moon and then compared to those on the planet Earth. The moon still has erupting volcanoes on it, the bases have been discovered on the moon to date. They were reactivated and are being used to mine moon minerals. Moon data. Diameter equals 2,126 miles. Distance from Tiamat equals 238,900 miles. The moon makes one complete orbit around Tiamat every 27.33 Earth days. It spins on its own axis 27.33 Earth days. Some say every 27.32 Earth days. The moon consists of four quarters. First quarter new moon. Last quarter full moon. It is divided by two crescents and two gibbous stages called phases. El Gadash Garan, the Holy Quran, speaks clearly of the splitting away of Al Kamar, the moon from Al Ard. Earth. It says in its 37th degree that has been changed to the 54th degree verses 1 and 2. The hour is coming close and the moon is split asunder. And if they see a sign, they turn away and they say, it is but a form of magic. The true Muslims are to have faith according to one of their own, Al-Bazari. When those in doubt ask Muhammad for a sign, the moon appeared to split in two. It is believed by them also that the last day will be noted by the moon's eclipse, and they are to prostrate twice. This is written in the 31st degree that has been changed to the 75th degree verses 8 through 10. And the moon is eclipsed, and the sun and the moon are gathered together. These days you see the sun and the moon are together in midday, and the Enoshites shall say on that day, where is the place to escape? Muhammad in El's Holy Quran swears by it three times, once in the fourth degree that has been changed to the 74th degree verses 32 through 39. Nevertheless, and the moon and the shadow hour period when it passes, and the early daytime hour when it appears, surely it hell is one of the biggest calamities, a warning to the mortals in skin, to those of you who will to go forward progress in agreeableness, follow the rights of Abraham, Abraham or Ibrahim, or remain behind 
stay in disagreeableness, follow rights other than Abraham's rights. Every Naf spirit person is held in pledge for that which it has earned, except for the companions of the right hand, the true Muslims, peaceful ones, and their seed, Halil Bayt. The true Muslims, peaceful ones, and their seed, the Halil Bayt. This is the Ansarullah, the only Muslims who strive for pristine purity. Again, Muhammad swears in the 83rd degree, which is changed to the 84th degree, verses 16 to 19. So nevertheless, I swear by the red glow of the sun when it darkens, and the shadow hour period, and when it gathers together shrouds, and the moon when it becomes full, that you shall most certainly pass from plane to plane, life after death. And the 26th degree, now changed to the 91st, verses 1 through 10 says, and the sun in its radiance, and the moon when it follows after it, and the daytime afternoon when it is brightened by it, and by the shadow hour period when it screens it, and the sky and what built it, and the planet earth and what landscaped it, and the spirit person and what perfected it, so he inspired it, the spirit to overstand its wickedness, and its trembling at the mentioned. He who purifies it, his spirit, has certainly become prosperous, and certainly he who buries it, his spirit, has has certainly failed. The crescent moon holds such great meaning to them. That is their symbol. The story of Luna. The moon as you know it is in its latter state. It was once a part of an enormous planet Tiamat 24 billion years ago. Before it broke off 11 billion years ago, and before that, it belonged to an even greater planet called Tiwawat. Before the planet Tiwawat was blown away by a crazy scientist by the name of Luna in an attempt to rule the whole planet. Luna's attempt to explode the whole planet Tiwawat caused the breaking away of the moon called Kingu, or Luna, meaning Great Emissary, which happened 66 billion years ago. He placed a bomb called Ballas, which was made from plutonium, that came from his original home in Pluto, and placed it in Shambhala, which was then called Eshera. Plutonium's name is derived from the planet Pluto. It has a radioactive chemical element, and bears the symbol PU. Its atomic number is 94, and its atomic weight is 239.13. Plutonium is one of the main elements used in nuclear weapons. In the center of the planet Earth is a long 30-mile tube due to the plutonium bomb. When Kingu the moon broke away, Luna himself was on that part. Luna or Luna wanted to rule the sun, moon and all the stars. He only ruled the lower half of the planet Tiwawat that you call Earth today. He equaled in power with the ruler of the upper half. However, he wanted to rule the whole planet. He brought his request before the Council of Deniers and was rejected by the Agigis because of his sarcasm, which is why he became known as Monos, deity of sarcasm and pain. His rejection angered him, and he decided to blow up the planet Tiwawat. Luna is an old deity who was disagreeable and ruled the planet Kingu before he died, and its waters dried up, due to it being thrown off into its own orbit by Nibiru. He was the deity of the moon, Kingu also called Luna, and his intentions were evil. Luna lived and ruled Kingu 66 billion years ago after it broke away from Tiwawat, the original Earth, which came with the original creation of the solar system that exploded from the Milky Way. The Milky Way was formed from a massive sun called Sao, collapsing and exploding outward. Then the Milky Way exploded again and gave birth to our present day sun called Shamus, or Halius, which is 93 billion years old. Before this sun called Shamus became a ball of gas containing hydrogen and helium, it was an active planet called Om, containing all of the planet's moons and satellites which make up the solar system. The sun was one tremendous mass, a planet called Om. The solar system was one of 19 planets that surrounded a more massive sun called Sal. Sal was named after its original ruler, Sal or Sol, whose wife was named Arena. Their combined rulership gives you the name Sal Arena, shortened to Solar. The massive sun Sal collapsed and exploded outwards, and On got caught up in the gravitational pull of Sal, and it was exploded and gave birth to your son, Shamus. All 19 of the planets were hauled off into space and exploded to create 19 galaxies in space and beyond. Galaxies are recorded as population 1, population 
Population 2, Population 3, and Population 4, and on. Population 1 galaxies are based on their age, are from hundreds of thousands of years old to 25 billion years old. Population 2 is from 25 billion years old to 100 billion years old. And Population 3, from 1 trillion to 25 trillion. Population 4 is from 25 trillion to 100 trillion, and on. The Milky Way from the Latin via way and Lactea Milky, which is the 18th galaxy, has taken its name from the Greek sea nymph Galatia, from the Middle English Galaxy, the Milky Way, from late Latin Galaxius, from Greek Milky, from Gala, Galact, meaning milk. This Milky Way galaxy exploded again to create the present solar system, the new heaven, and new earth will reveal a second and third sun. Yet at this point, you have one sun called Shemus, or Halius, and ten planets called one Mercury, two Venus, three Earth, four Mars, five Jupiter, Jupiter, 6 Saturn, 7 Titan, 8 Uranus, 9 Neptune, 10 Pluto, and on the outside, the 11th planet being Maldek, and also Planet X, another name for the 12th planet. When you include the Sun and the Moon as planets, it becomes Nibiru. This was the making of the 18th galaxy, ruled by the signs of the zodiac called solar biology. This all took place 76 trillion years ago. It's called the birth of the universe from triple darkness. Luna wanted to rule the whole universe so we used over 30 million tons of atomic energy to blow up Tiwawat, thinking that it would shift the orbit of the planets and cause a planetary collapse or star holocaust. He was originally a humanoid type Maldek from Gaga Pluto, who lived on Tiwawat after they had crashed down, and he tried to rule all the beings on Earth. The Maldekians and their slaves, the Troglodytes, also known as the Masmukia, have been using the vast seas of the planet Earth for billions of years as a home base under the Bermuda Triangle, also called the Angels Triangle. Luna was originally from Gaga, which was later called Pluto or Platoon, a planet that was also occupied by the Maldekians or Troglodytes, as well as Hindus, who resided on Pluto after they left their planet Nirvana, and mixed with the Maldekians, of which Luna was a product of. These beings also lived on planets like Titan, Europa and Earth, that are in the Milky Way galaxy. Also other planets, such as the bright stars Betelgeuse and Rigel and many others, all a part of the six star constellation Orion, also called Uranus and Cassiel, which is held up by the Sirius star constellation. A star in the constellation Canis Minor, the brightest star in the sky, approximately 8.6 light years distant from Earth, also called the dog star Sothis. From Latin Sirius, from Greek Sirios, burning. Canis Major and Canis Minor are the two dog stars of Orion the Hunter, a nearby constellation containing the star Betelgeuse, with which Sirius and Procyon together form an equilateral triangle. The Orion constellation is located on the celestial equator east of Taurus. It is an oblong configuration with three stars in a line near its center in the Orion's belt called the nebula. It is represented on pictorial charts as the figure of Orion. It was called Sahu, the soul of Usir Osiris. The three bright stars represent his belt. 1. al Natak, 2. al Nilan, 3. Mintaka. This is the home of the agreeable Anunnaki or Alahum, and the disagreeable four wings, which make up 1. Betelgeuse, 2. Bellatrix, 3. Rigel, 4. Safe. Under the watchful eye of Sept, also called Sirius and Sothis, where Nibiru took residence. There is also three fainter stars aligned south of the belt. Alpha A Aramis, or Betelgeist, is located in the left corner of the oblong, which corresponds to Orion's shoulder. Beta B Aramis, or Rigel, is diagonally opposed to Betelgeist. A nebula surrounding the three stars marking Orion's sword is one of the most conspicuous bright nebulas in the heavens. Luna's daughter was also called Luna, and his wife was called Hyperion. Luna also had a daughter named Persephone, and she married Pluto, also known as Hades, a son of Cronos and Rhea, ruler of the underworld.
Rhea was from Uranus, which was the name of the ruler of that planet, and his wife Gaia, mother of Poseidon. Gaia was ruler of Titan, where there were great cyclopses, which are any of the race of one-eyed giants who reputedly descended from Titan, inhabiting the island of Sicily. From the Latin from the Greek Kuklos, Kuklos meaning circle eye, there were also Furies, which were the three terrible winged goddesses with serpentine hair, Alecto, Megera, and Tisiphon, who pursued and punished evildoers of unavenged crimes. From the Middle English Fury, from Old French from Latin Furia, from Furiae meaning to rage, and also there were giants, meaning a person or thing of great size. From Middle English, from French, jaunt, from Vulgar Latin, gagas, from Latin, gigas, from the Greek, gigas. These were the rulers in this solar system, after and before the crash of Nibiru's winds into Tiamat. Yes, there were giants in the earth before Cadman Adam, the Zamzamims meaning plotters, the Emims meaning terrors, the Philistines meaning immigrants, and the Rephaims meaning healers. With the wind ships of the Maldekians, also known as the Vulcans, when trillions were billions, and billions were millions, and millions were thousands. This is in accordance to the motion of your planet around Afsu the Sun, and how far your planet was from it. So the moon is a satellite of the planet Earth, has three birthday records. 11 billion, it breaks off from the planet Tiamat Earth. 24 billion, the recreation of the planet Earth. And 76 trillion, the original creation of the entire universe. Just as the conception of a mortal goes through three phases to birth, that which is declared the moon today had went through three separate periods in its path to becoming what it is. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using El Kalum the All. Tablet 7 The Creation of Your Solar System 19 times 5 equals 75. Lo, 95 billion years ago, your solar system formed out of a gigantic whirling dust cloud and gas as a result of the collapse of that great star Sal. Elian Elian El, the Most High, Al Ali, or El, or Elah, who is simply known as Allah, Rab, and Yahweh, or Hashem, and Ra, and Anu. All of these names are called by religious people. However, he is one and the same. Anu created this universe and the planet called Earth for his blueprint of physical creation, meaning that these two entities, the sky and the Earth, marked as the beginning of everything to come. It was the spirit of the Most High that controlled everything to quicken and come into being, come to life. So he is called the light of the galactic heaven and the planet Earth. This marks the time when the explosion came from combining two hydrogen atoms to make helium, and then the combination of the two gases which led to a series of chain reactions exploding, and this was the creation of Shamash. That cloud of dust and gas existed unformed in the universe, then it began to collapse. This brought two hydrogen atoms together to form helium. Hydrogen, the most abundant and simplest gas in the universe, is the fuel of the stars of which there are many kinds. There are binary stars which are a pair of stars which revolve around each other, and eclipsing binary stars which are stars that revolve in such a way that one star blocks the other's light. Stars such as your own stay hot because of the nucleus changes in their centers. Over a period of time, increasing degrees of contractions and heat occur until reactions in their centers produce intense heat and brightness. In the stellar cores, hydrogen is converted into helium and other heavier elements, as 550 million tons of hydrogen changed into 550 million tons of helium each second of your sun. The remaining 4 million exploded from the center to birth sunspots or electrical storms on the sun. This was the birth of your sun, originally called Afsu, known today as Shemas or Shemas, by the great ruler Anu, the most high, the highest. Between these two gases, light fire came into being. The sun's energy comes from the changing of hydrogen to helium at a temperature of about 30 million and 175,262 degrees Fahrenheit. Helium burning gives off hydrogen, which in turn makes more helium. This is what makes the sun a ball of gas, which is constantly burning. 
The burning of atoms causes explosions, also called electrical storms. These storms give off sparks of hydrogen and helium that fling out into the universe. Upon being flung out into the universe, whirling at tremendous speeds, these sparks of burning gas begin to cool to a lesser degree of heat, and it's settled in different places within the universe. We call these planets moons and asteroids. From your sun's electrical storms came the birth of your solar system. This is the third degree of darkness. This explosion caused a reverse action, from expansion to contraction, that led to the collapse. This supernova was one billion light years away at the time. After becoming red giant supernovas, from the word super, meaning above, over, upon, superimpose, superior in size from the Latin, from super, meaning over, above, and the word nova, meaning a star that suddenly becomes much brighter and then gradually returns to its original brightness over a period of weeks to years, from the Latin stella, nova, new, star, nova, feminine of Latin novus, meaning new. These supernovas collapse upon themselves, producing intense heat and causing their cause to explode. Sometimes an explosion blows the star to bits and at other times a lump may still be left to become a neutron star, which is a small star made up entirely of neutrons, a collapsed star of tremendous density. A neutron star is a celestial body hypothesized to occur in a terminal stage of stellar evolution. It essentially consists of a super dense mass of neutrons that have a powerful gravitational attraction from which only neutrinos and high energy photons can escape, thus rendering the body invisible, except to X-ray detection. Neutron stars have a mass of about one solar mass and a radii of about 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles. Their densities are thought to be about 10 to the power 14 times that of water. Because of their identification with pulsars, rotating neutron stars are thought to have extremely strong magnetic fields on the order of 10 to the power of 12 gauze, compared to a field of 0.2 gauze on Earth and a few thousand gauze in sunspots. Every time they spin, they give out a flash of energy like a lighthouse. The largest remaining bit of star may also become so compressed and possessed such an intense gravitational pull that it becomes a black hole. At the center of a black hole, the star that died is crushed out of existence by the force of gravity. Black hole gives off no light and acts like stellar vacuum cleaners, sucking up matter and energy from space. They can be compared to the effect that is produced when a cup of liquid is stirred at high speed. Once the spoon is removed, a hole is made in the center like a miniature whirlpool. Floating objects are drawn and sucked into the center. So black holes will absorb any stray matter or energy that passes within a certain range of its horizon, including light. Dwarf stars, which are also dark brown, are made of protons. Novas are stars that explode and become thousands of times brighter and then becomes dim again. The white dwarf is a small white star with a large amount of material packed into an extremely small space. A white dwarf star is about the size of the Earth but weighs as much as the Sun. The weight of the sun's outer layers compress the gas of the innermost region to a density about 100 times that of water and raises the central temperature to about 15 million K, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Then there are supernovas, an extremely bright star exploding suddenly appearing in the sky generally decreasing rapidly in brightness. Giants have a relatively large radius for its mass and temperature, and supergiants are any relatively enormous stars with a greater magnitude than a giant star. Their lifetimes are short in comparison to other stars. Some of the smaller stars are called neutron stars, which are made up entirely of neutrons, a collapsed star of tremendous density. A light year is the distance light can travel in one year. Light travels at approximately 186,000 272 miles per second over a period of 365 days of the solar year. Then there is a lunar year of 354 days of the solar year. That means that light travels 5,874,273,700,000 miles per second each 31,536,000 years.
This supernova was part of a cluster. All clusters move away from each other. A cluster is one of many groups in which galaxies exist, 19 to be exact on this side of the massive black hole, whose vortex opens every 10 Earth years. This vortex allows you to travel interdimensionally through these portals in time and space, which open up on Earth every 10 years that ends with the number 3. Because time is speeding up, you get caught in time. For instance, if the last time was 1993 AD of the Gregorian calendar, let's go back to where it started. 1983, 1973, 1963, 1953, then 1943, when the opening of the vortex with the invention of a time machine in the Philadelphia experiment. Then the next year of the opening of the vortex will be 2003 AD. Your time warp started in 1940 AD with the Philadelphia incident. This experiment is what caused the vortex to open up, causing extraterrestrials to come into this dimension because of the magnetic pull from the big generators that supplied energy for the invisibility project in Philadelphia. The vortex can be opened by extraterrestrials from the sixth density from their time reference. And one such incident occurred on June the 6th, 1966 AD, which was the birthday of the third 13 sons who were born to the devil. All types of malevolent beings came through to Earth during this time. The Philadelphia experiment was an experiment to accomplish teleportation of a warship. The USS Eldridge from Philadelphia was to dock near Norfolk, Virginia by using Albert Einstein's unified field theory. This experiment originally began in 1930 in Chicago, Illinois with a team of scientists. A strange phenomenon happened where two Navy men, Alfred Balick and Duncan Cameron, and jumped over the side of the Eldridge and they landed in Montauk, Long Island, New York. Where the scientists went wrong was that they did not take into consideration that the sailors all had emotional involvements at the time of the experiment. So in trying to link up the USS Eldridge, an object, versus the biorhythms of a living entity, the human body, and the Earth, which had a half peak at the time, caused the problems. The scientists had no understanding of the human psyche, love, nor metaphysics of the Earth which also has a biorhythm like the human body, because it's also a living entity. Also, everybody had a zero time reference different from everyone else. These factors caused a strange phenomenon that occurred on the ship. All humans have a zero time reference. Now they're locked at zero time reference, which is a set time created during the beginning of an experiment. For humans, it is at the point at which each individual is conceived, and it continues on into the gestation period until they are born. It is locked into a time stream. It is locked so that an individual can relate to society and civilization around them and flow at the same rate as everyone else and has a reference that remains with them throughout their lifetime until they die, at which the soul goes on and on and can come back, reincarnate theoretically in the past or the future. But this time reference is sometimes fragile when you start pumping megawatts of power and actually pulse to the gigawatt region, the type of energies that will affect the psyche, mind and spirit, you disrupt these references. So what happened was, the reference of the individual is disrupted, but are within the ship's field, so they are not lost. They don't float off into space at that point, but when the ship's field comes down, and those individual references are below and behind the barrier, which was in the hull of the ship in the radio room, where Duncan and Balak were, they were in between these energy shields that are against magnetic energy. This interdimensional travel is nothing new. We have been doing this for millions of years, which allows beings from other worlds, galaxies or universes to incarnate here. Let me explain. Most of the crafts exposed to you here on Earth are designed aerodynamically, showing you that they were created and built right here for this atmosphere, or there would be no need for their saucer shape, which is to cut its way through the air. However, the Niberian fleet are crafts that travel to and fro in time and space, and even interdimensionally, altering time by facilitating the principle of now once you're moving faster than the speed of light. After a universe collapses in its center or contracts, it expands, which is an explosion called a Big Bang, producing the sound car from which the word color create comes from. This occurrence of contraction and expansion is something that happens all the time, which is also why there is no real line of division between galaxies. They overlap each other, 
the wave bubbles connect to each other just as the planes do. It is the same sound that each being that comes into the world makes as the womb contracts to yield for birth and the baby gurgles out ga and ka, remembering the sounds of chaos in creation as one of the things that come into existence, it fractures other things to form itself. It's a gradual process of development in the womb as the sounds of an octave. Each C note of each octave is the same as the C note vibrating on a higher or lower scale called tones. An octave is eight notes and all of these sounds are inclusive of the sharps and flats. Within one octave is 13. The ninth point is the actual birth, and the new being creates for the first time for all to hear their own tone. Such is the way of the universe and galaxies. Now, each universe begins expanding and growing larger until it reaches a point where it bounces off other expanding universes and begins to contract. This is only to collapse and explode again, creating or reconstructing new universes. Atoms and cells all do the exact same thing the human body does. It grows and expands until it collapses. You call it death, which is merely a sickness that can be cured. So, the universe does the exact same thing. It dies. When the universe dies, it explodes and causes a reverse of an expansion. The space between galaxies is always getting bigger. So billions of years ago, galaxies were closer and closer before expanding. Before there had to be a point of starting. This would have all the galaxies crunched together in a small space. This would have been 76 trillion years ago. The small dot or nugget exploded and this was called the Big Bang, resulting from the expansion then collapsing of the universe. This sound is ka, which disturbs the ayun tone of the original. This caused the explosion of the positive low pitch tones, dark tones, and the negative forces, high pitch tones, bright tones, causing the negative and the positive forces to clash into each other by the will of Alion Elion L, who is outside of your time zone. Your time zone is second to second, minute to minute, hour to hour, and day to day. Yet each day of your days is a thousand years to Elion Elion L's day, making it hard for you to understand just how Elion Elion L exists. For the pure sound of Om, which predates the bang, is covered in the chaos of creation, and you must seek this tone Om to realign yourselves. Each individual born vibrates and has a tone within an octave, and there are various octaves to complete the full scale of the sound, and sound vibrates from conception to decline to end, which registers in time. Each individual has a zero time reference and tone reference and vibrational level, yet you exist in what's called a set time, which exists within real time. That is, each individual's real time, their point of origin. All hearts do not beat like a metronome at exact beats per second. Sound flows and is utilized, cut on and cut off. Life flows and is utilized, cut on and cut off. Elian Elian L's time does not have a then, only a now. Whereas each individual is at the point of now and looks back at multiple thens and looks forwards to multiple thens. Thus, on both sides of the present, you find past and future. That was the very beginning, not the beginning. The time, El Wagat, El Asr, it says in El's Holy Quran, the 13th degree, which has been changed to the 183rd degree, verses 1 through 3, pertaining to the time when the Enoshite soul will be squeezed from his body and is overcome by death. And the squeezing of the Enoshite soul, it shall be squeezed from his body. Surely, this is the age when the Enoshites are overcome by defeat, except for those who are faithful and work to perfect their being and are advocates of patience by the measurements of time when it begins and when it ends to humans your reference time began at the recreation of this planet then called tiamat to key and now earth from iridu time does not move forward nor has it come from behind it has always been Time does not ascend upwards, nor has it descended from above. Time is now. Now is the time. Time is. Then now is not then. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using alkaline the all. Tablet 8 Life forms of Tiamat Earth 19 times 4 equals 76 Lo, 
Your planet Earth is within the 18th galaxy called the Milky Way because of its disc-shaped dense mass of stars, which has millions of stars and light. The sun's stars and the reflected light of the moon from the sun produce the much-needed illumination for the Earth. One takes up where the other leaves off. Yet, this is only made possible by the motion of these heavenly bodies. It will take 30,000 years to go from Earth through the Milky Way at Earth's speed. Each individual conceived has a zero time reference from the moment of inception, the moment or incident, in pure and holy darkness, before cause or effect, before right and wrong, good and evil, before chaos and conception, process or growth. In the unpure and unholy light of this world, where there is will, good and evil things happening. That point is real time in each individual's existence, in the physical world, from conception is fake time. You exist in what's called set time. You set the time from life to death. It all exists before you and will exist after you. You in your life is only a short space in real time, which exists in all when the light of life is cut on. It begins real time, yet existence already was in pure darkness and under set time is each individual's real time existence, their point of origin. Alien Alien L's time does not have a then, only a now whereas each individual is at the point of now and looks back to multiple thens and looks forward to multiple thens. Thus, on both sides of the present, you find past and future. Nubiru is capable of traveling the distance from point to point or through space and time interdimensionally. It can go through time, future or past without interfering with the principle of now or then. Everything is calculated by the speed of light, insofar as everything sums up to things when the light came on. For instance, when you grab the light switch, you are at the point of hydrogen. When you click the light switch, you are at the point of helium, and both hydrogen and helium burning gives you the light of the sun. When beings enter into our planet, they travel interdimensionally, using real time, and that's why they can pop up any time within our zero time or fake time. Zero time is the first time for each individual as they come into this world while being born in real time. If humans were to try and travel past the speed of light, their g-force would cause them to explode. They would have to learn to travel at the speed of light and controlling the g-force. That is, the forces that affect the body as it escalates in speed in relation to how one g affects the body per second. A g is a unit of acceleration equal to the acceleration caused by gravity at the Earth's surface, about 33 feet per second. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy and is inside of the universe and is very minute. The light from the sun comes to the Earth. Light travels from the sun in 8 minutes and approximately 20 seconds, some say 4 minutes. Your universe contains 19 galaxies. There are 1 billion other galaxies. The distances in your universe reach up to 26 billion light years. Your universe is the smallest and innermost of the seven universes, which are part of a galactical federation of 19 galaxies. As the universe increases, the universes get larger and larger. Your mind cannot comprehend the circumference of the universe. It is unimaginable to you while in your body. The word that best describes it is infinity. The universe doesn't end. You're merely limited by your imagination. My child, for a time it was hard for you to understand the very beginning of your existence. It was difficult for you to accept that you were made to evolve from intelligent amoeba, which are single-celled organisms with a definite nucleus that move by way of a pseudopod or false foot. A pseudopod is a temporary projection of the cytoplasm of certain cells, such as phagocytes, or certain unions cellular organisms, especially amoebas, that serve in locomotion and phagocytosis. The word amoeba is from New Latin genus name, from Greek amoebi, change, from amoeba to change, and fungi which are single-celled or multicellular organisms that excrete enzymes that actually dissolve their food, then absorb their food through their cellular walls. However, this was your beginning a beginning unknown to Hummus. Thus, as you read this tablet, you will have a great understanding of how you became who and what you are today. The first kind of life forms on this planet were the evolution of the amoeba, fungi, and algae that live underwater and evolved onto land, which were transplanted here. Early Earth was composed of the gases ammonia and methane, in addition to water, H2O. The cooling of the Earth and the subsequent falling of the vapor rings allowed these gases to reach the waters upon Earth, forming solids in a molten crust. 
The exposure of ultraviolet rays from the sun caused these gases to form simple organic molecules from things here. These began to form larger molecules until protein was formed. It was this formation which ultimately resulted in a prototype of the living cell, which occurred 46 trillion years ago. Bear in mind that these chain reactions did not occur by blind chance, but only by the will of the Most High Anu. The stage after the creation of the first cell took place in the lab of Shimti, where the breath of life is breathed, which is located on Lathmu Mars. This cell or cells was then placed inside the Vulcan deity, a dolphin. Dolphins are members of the most intelligent group of animals living in the sea. However, what many people don't know is, dolphins are actually small whales that range in length from 4 to 12 feet. The word dolphin comes from the Greek delphis meaning room because of its shape and it was the room of the transplant for the human cell. Unlike many animals, dolphins voluntarily associate with humans. The common dolphin appeared in ancient Greek and Roman mythology. The Greeks considered the dolphin sacred to the god Apollo. Dolphins have very highly developed senses such as sight, which they are able to see up to 50 feet away. Touch, responding to the lightest touch of a finger. Smell and taste are also two of their senses which aren't as developed, yet dolphins do have taste buds. Dolphins have an excellent sense of hearing and is one of their most important senses of all, yet they have no outer ear and can see with sound. This is known as echolocation. When sounds are sent out from an organ in a dolphin's head, they strike objects and bounce back. The direction of these echoes and the time it takes them to return tells the direction and distance of the objects. These first cells in Shimti were transplanted and transported into the seas of this planet. This transportation involved the development of the first animals 24 billion years ago. These were single cell organisms called protozoa. The simplest of this group is the amoeba, a small mass of transparent protoplasm which does not even have a definite shape or cell wall. The first single-celled animal to originate was the amoeba, which is found in water or moist soil and reproduces asexually. This means they reproduce alone, they don't need a partner. Fungus arose from this single-celled organism and played an important role in nature. They break down the bodies of dead organisms into chemical substances that can be used by other organisms. Fungi live as parasites and reproduce either sexually or asexually. The simplest particle of life is H1 hydrogen. What is smaller than that is a quirk of which atoms are composed. The atom is the smallest unit of an element that retains all of the element's properties. All things are made of atoms, which are composed of quirks and even smaller called exotic mesons or biaps, such as protons, units of positive electricity, neutrons, units of neutral electricity, and electrons, electrically negative parts of the atom, to name a few, which are made of zeds or zeals. Together, these form a specific pattern. The zeal is the smallest part of any substance. This is called quantum physics, my child, the doorway to reality. The atom is too small to be seen, even with the most powerful electron microscope. Yet all that is, is in parts, and is part of existence. The average diameter of an atom is approximately one to one millionth of an inch. At the center of an atom is a smaller particle called a quirk, the father of energy, which in itself was produced by the mother of all energy, biaps, as in the cells beneath the cell or in the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Then. There is the nucleus, a dense cluster of protons and neutrons on the outside of a quirk. Why do we refer to it as the mother? The mother mitochondria, located on the Y chromosome, is the male equivalent to the mitochondria DNA called YAP DNA. This is the same as when a female is pregnant with a male child, only without the male sperm as in a so-called asexual cell splitting into a daughter. This practice of splitting and parting and becoming individual life forms is only found in the female or mother. So in actuality, asexual cells are really epsexual cells for female sexuality. The word mitochondria is from the Greek mitos, meaning warp, thread, and the Greek chondrion, the munitive of chondros, from grain or granule. Mitochondria are the tiny bodies within a cell that are responsible for the production of energy through the breakdown of sugars. The mitochondria DNA is in the female, which produces the male in a so-called asexual fashion. This is your original hermaphrodite, which comes from Hermaphroditus, the son of Hermes, who is the son of Zeus and Maya. 
and Aphrodite, the daughter of Uranus. When you look at the word phonetically, you see her, as in a three-letter prefix, and her is always identified with she, or the female gender, as in most hermaphrodite cases, yet it includes male strands that create Y chromosomes. Now, the very word her is from Middle English, from Old English higher. Important derivatives are he, him, his, her, it, here, hence. Note that her is inclusive of he in its root meaning. He is from Middle English, from Old English he. The pronouns he, him and his are male person or animal. So he is always identified with the male factor, when her, on the other hand, is inclusive with male and female factors, making her the mother. N equals mitochondria, and add other and you get the word mother. Together, the protons which have a positive charge and neutrons which have no charge are called nucleons. Outside spinning around the nucleus in orbits are electrons which have a negative charge that makes up what is called the shell of the atom, atom. All atoms vary in the amount of protons, electrons and neutrons according to the elements to which they belong. In reality, no atom has a definite size in space and time. However, it gets its form from its surrounding electrons. Atoms are building blocks from which molecules are made, and a molecule is the smallest unit of a pure substance that can exist independently and exhibit all the properties of substance, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. These gases formed into simple organic molecules, at which time these organic molecules began to form larger and larger molecules until until protein was formed. Listen, my child, concerning the recreation of the planet Earth. It was this formation which ultimately resulted in a prototype of the living organism. The stage after the creation of the first cell involved the development of the first animals, which is called a protozoa, which comes from the Greek proto, first in time, and zoa from zoia, meaning animals. When producing, the protozoa splits into two separate animals or cells, just as at birth, the mother splits in two beings. Over a period of 19 million Earth years of time, these animals multiplied and diversified and evoluted into many types of creatures and animal life forms. The protozoa were originally transported and planted here on this planet Earth by beings from the planet Risk, the Anunnaki, called the Alahum. And do not forget, my child, the conditions of your planet had to be right. These first atoms were made up of very simple combinations with each other, but sunlight contains energy, and this energy forced atoms into more complicated combinations until small cells formed. This also happened on many other planets with the same chemicals and temperatures. So, there is life on many other planets. The key is water, in which is life as bacteria. There are intelligent bacteria that help earthlings digest their food and many other positive things. There are also intelligent bacteria that hurt earthlings. Intelligent bacteria do things such as make you sick and cause diseases in humans, animals and plants. In humans they cause diseases such as syphilis, meaning a friend of the swine. Leprosy from Middle English from leper, leprosy from Old French from Late Latin lepra, from Greek lepros, scaly from lepis, lepros meaning scale, and pneumonia from pneumon meaning lung, and is an inflammatory disease of the lung, to name a few. Most of these diseases came to this planet from other planets, some of which are in your solar system, and others that are far beyond your knowledge. Many are diseases of your body. In fact, some live on your body, like streptococcus and herpes, just to name two of the many thousands. You shall have knowledge, for in this tablet are facts beyond any doubt. Like many other simple organisms, bacteria can multiply by asexual reproduction or by bi and fission, the splitting of an adult cell in two separate parts and budding, where an outgrowth grows from the parent organism and then breaks off and becomes another separate organism, birth. This occurs when the nucleus of the cell divides, forming two new cells, daughter cells. And make note, it doesn't say sun cells. The exact same way a hologram, from the Greek holos, whole, and the gram, from French gramme, from late Latin grammar, a small weight, from Greek meaning something written, small weight. The hologram can be broken into millions of parts and each one is the same. So it is with cells. And then, my child, there are other bacteria that just live with you, never bothering you at all. 
The first plant life was simple plants that began as one-celled organisms of the classes known today as bacteria and algae. These originated in water, yet their structure and composition enabled them to exist in all types of environments and conditions. Some have unknown origins. Scientists have found a new life form on Earth. These life forms are tough little microbes that live in boiling water, spewing from volcanic vents deep under the ocean thriving on carbon dioxide and the tremendous water pressure. They are a third form of terrestrial life named Archaea, after the Greek word for ancient. This is a very different life form from what scientists know. They were first discovered on the bottom of the Pacific in 1977. However, recently scientists discovered that their genetic code was different from anything biologists have seen before. Unlike most bacteria and or plants, animals and humans, Archaea lives totally without sunlight. When the usual organisms start dying, these ones start singing. Algae have bodies composed of a single cell. Algae accounts for 90% of the world's photosynthesis. Bacteria are found everywhere, in water, air, soil, your bodies and food. Many of them are helpful and necessary for your physical existence. They are also useful in the decomposition and dissolving of solid waste. Then you have the virus. A virus is a submicroscopic organism that has an exceedingly simple structure composed of nucleic acid with a protective protein covering coming from the latin meaning poison in the case of some of the viruses that live in bacteria and animal cells the nucleic acid is generally dna deoxyribonucleic acid in the viruses that cause diseases of plants the nucleic acid is usually rna ribonucleic acid a virus lives in a cell of another thing Although viruses are small and simple, they are a major cause of diseases. Some viruses infect human beings with diseases or dis-ease. Others infect other animals or plants, and still others attack bacteria. Viruses produce diseases in an organism by damaging some of its cells. However, viruses sometimes live in cells without harming them. Most viruses reproduce in specific cells of certain organisms. Viruses are Gaia Earth's means of defense when attacked. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using alkaline, the all. Tablet 9, the evolutionary process, 19 times 14 equals 266. Lo, you are about to embark upon the truth. I shall take you a step further into the world of true right knowledge, right wisdom, and the right understanding. For many years, Hummings have pondered about the evolution of the inhabitants of the planet Earth. The question was in the minds of humans as to where each species and each life form evolved. You must learn of the evolutionary process. This will give you great knowledge of that which is right and exact, and right wisdom, right understanding, and sound right reasoning, of how and where 9 ether versus the 6 ether came about. Now, let us begin by learning of a time before, when a large craft from the Ninga fleet, thought to be a meteorite, crashed into the planet, shearing off the lower half of it. That was 24 billion years ago. This caused the development of Earth's shape and form as you know it today, bringing with it new kinds of life forms, some to make residence beneath the seas of what is called the Bimini today, where the great empire of the reptilians thrive, even unto this day. This empire is located in the Atlantic Ocean, in the area called the Bermuda Triangle or Angel's Triangle. Other life forms took shape on the surface of the Earth. It was gases and electrical sparks that formed the complex molecules from the simple ones originally planted here some 76 trillion years ago. For billions of years, life continued to consist of no more than simple cells, yet with intelligence. As time passed, more complicated cells were born, and these gradually became even more complicated cells, which were giving birth until they eventually combined with each other or married to give birth to even larger organisms. The more complicated an organism, such as algae, the larger its brain is, thus the more intelligent it became. These living organisms evolved out of the water, through the ammonia and onto the soil. 
Millions of years after that, the next group of animals developed called metazoans. Their bodies were composed of specialized cells, grouped to form tissues, organs and systems, much like the animals of today. These animals multiplied and diversified, and over a period of 19 million years, evolved into man, many types of animals and dragons, called terrible lizards or simply dinosaurs. This was the first evolution of life on the planet Earth. These inhabitants went through many changes, such as the Ice Age glaciers, volcanoes and earthquakes. During this time, there were also problems with the dinosaurs and humans. The evolution of the dinosaurs and humans were in balance, to the point that the dinosaurs were much bigger than the humans, and they were killing them off. These humans were of the Homo erectus species. They had six feet for hair, covering most of their bodies. Dinosaurs are classified or divided into separate groups. One being the Sarischia, lizard hips. He's a four-legged plant-eating dinosaur and can also be a meat-eating dinosaur. The other being Ornithischia, bird hip. This group of dinosaurs is your two-legged plant eaters and all of your armored dinosaurs. In your Ornithischia, the forward pointing bone has swung around in order that it can point backwards and forwards. And Sarischia have hip bones that are found within reptiles. These bones point in different directions. These two names are in reference to the arrangement of three bones of the pelvis. In the Sarischia, these bones were arranged similar to that of modern crocodiles and lizards. These are your tanine, while the pelvis of the Ornithischia was bird-like. Therefore, humans developed from a one-cell animal, which developed into a water creature. And these humans are tadpoles or reptilians for the first three months in their mother's womb. This is why humans still have webbed hands, gills, and scales. In their own evolution, with the help of their mammalian parent, they become the root seed of mammals, later called the human being. In its primeval state, they climbed upon the landmass and developed into land creatures and then onto genus Homo, onto Homo erectus. And these land creatures that were once tadpoles or reptilians grew while in their mother's womb. From three months plus three months more, during this period, they were connected to an umbilical cord, umbilicus or navel, that is on the abdomen of the fetus and is connected to the placenta. This mark on the surface of the abdomen of mammals who once dwelt in the marina or water is where the umbilical cord, also called umbilicus, was. This central point or middle is attached during gestation. The very word navel comes from the Middle English word nephala and is the same as the Aramic Hebrew word nephala, nephilim, to fall down which is the same word, it's in the phonetics of the language. It is a clear picture in these days and times that the words navy, navel, navel and marina tie in. This is a confession that man was a tadpole and was considered a sea creature. Life forms that evolved from the sea were water vertebrates. They did not appear until 500 million years ago, and land vertebrates followed about 100 million years ago. About 225 million years ago, there were fish in the waters as well as sea plants. Most amphibians had made the transition from dry water to land. The plants on the dry land attracted the amphibians to evolve into reptiles. The dolphin is a whale went from the stars to this planet in the sea, then onto land, then back into the sea as a whale. Crocodiles are the remnant of that evolutionary phase also. From 225 million years ago to 65 million years ago, which is the period of time often referred to as the dinosaur age, evolved two main lines of egg-laying reptiles. Those who could fly, which evolved into birds, like the pterodactyls from the Greek pteron, meaning feather, wing, and dactylus from the Greek for finger, and those who roamed and dominated the earth as dinosaurs, called the Tyrannosaurus rex, tyrant reptile, or terrible lizards. These reptiles evolved alongside with a variety of amphibians and water lizards, away from the oceans and their water life, which is full of activity. When humans came out of the water, your evolution jumped billions of years. When humans crawled on the land, they were in the form of what looked like crocodiles. If you examine the back or the spinal columns of humans, you can see knots up and down the spinal column. Millions of years ago, it was a fin. This fin or sail was used to conduct heat and regulate heat, and the body had to mutate. Dehem of mankind to this day still has it at the end of his spinal column, an extension called a coccyx, that is a tail as well as wings under the arms and webbed hands. This human developed from what you would call a dinosaur today. 
This dinosaur was called Demetrodon. It got its name from it. Having that which is unique, that being two sets of teeth. No other animal had two sets of teeth. The Demetrodon lived about 60 to 300 million years ago, which means that it lived at the end of the Paleozoic era. Demetrodon was a large meat-eating reptile, which measured some 10 to 12 feet from nose to tail, and 5 feet in height, which explains why many human beings have a craving for flesh. When Demetrodon, who was of the Paleozoic era, ruled, this deadly creature roamed the valley before the dinosaurs of the Mesozoic era. The Demetrodon was the first to inhabit the land. It was a warm-blooded reptile. Demetrodon is a deadly reptile known for the enormous sail on its back. This sail was used for the purpose of regulating body heat. By turning the sail to face the sun, the Demetrodon was able to warm up much more quickly in about less than an hour, which allowed the Demetrodon more time to hunt. A reptile can't stay active if it's too hot. However, without heat, reptiles become more sluggish still and helpless. But mammals can regulate the heat of their bodies because they are warm-blooded. Demetrodon is not an ordinary reptile. The resemblance between humans and Demetrodon was the teeth. Both humans and Demetrodons have two sets of teeth, which were in size as canines and different sized teeth behind the canines. These are only found on mammals. 360 million years before Demetrodon, some creatures crawled out of the ocean, which were early amphibians. Within 20 million years, they split into two groups. One became the aggressive species, which were the diapsid. The other was the passive synapsid. They began to compete for supremacy. From generation to generation, each line improved and perfected itself. When the diapsids and the synapsids moved further up the evolutionary chain, they began to split in different directions. The diapsids had two holes, two openings in the skulls, which evolved into all modern reptiles, such as turtles, crocodiles, alligators, lizards, etc. While the synapsids had a single hole in the back of their skulls, which evolved into all proto-mammals, such as Demetrodon, armadillo, whales, dogs, cows, humans, and all other mammals that evolved in this line. The two holes allowed the skull not to squeeze the brain. Proto-mammals were changing from a reptilian to mammalian and from a mammal-like reptile posture. They took possession of the land masses for 50 million years and dominated the planet. Demetrodon's first descendants were hot-blooded. This was a detour in evolution. They took steps from reptilian to mammalian. The dinosaurs started to take control and the proto-mammals began to disappear in the Triassic period 245 million years ago. Thus, larger animals began a long conquest and pushed proto-mammals to the brink of extinction. The lizard-like Orphiacidon and warm-blooded Demetrodon reduced in size. Proto-mammals had to adapt to nightlife, becoming nocturnal hunters. As proto-mammals began to mutate and evolute out of its present state, the size of their brains grew. During this time, extraterrestrials had leaped in and started to breed also. Although life evolved from the seas, all of it did not originate here. Some life forms crashed into the seas of Tiamat from the Maldek incident, particularly from the Ninga star fleet. They, being from another star constellation, and they lived under the seas of Tiamat. These other life forms were beings known as the Troglodytes or Maldekians, which crashed down on Tiamat. One of the four Maldekian crafts, called the Westerwind, crashed into the center of the planet Earth. These beings lived in the seas of Tiamat Earth for millions of years. Their home base is under the Bermuda Triangle. They set up kingdoms called Yams under the waters. The Maldekians developed into intelligent humanoids by abducting and mixing their seeds with humans. This is where the reptilian-like dinosaurs came from. While on the other hand, there was another set of extraterrestrial beings like the Greys, from which some of the dinosaurs evolved from. These Greys came from the star constellation Orion, the star constellation of Actores and Pleiades. Meanwhile, the reptilians ruled them from Rigel and Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Mintaka, Al Nalam, and Al Natak in the Orion star constellation, and Ariga in the Capella star formation. They were all in fear of the aggressive insect type extraterrestrials from Andromeda, many of which came down to this planet Earth. One of the common species of dinosaurs that evolved from the Ramadian seed of greys was the Hypsilophodon, who came out of the Jurassic period. They were called Hypsilophodon because of their high ridge teeth. The Hypsilophodon were herbivores, they only ate off the plant plants and fruits, extracting the needed chlorine. The most common dinosaur that evolved from the reptilians were the Tyrannosaurus rex, meaning tyrant reptile or terrible lizard. It is 50 feet long and 20 feet in height and weighed 7 tons. It was one of the largest carnivores that ever walked the planet Tiamat Earth. 
This creature is known to be the king of the meat eaters. The Tyrannosaurus rex came out of the reptilians, making them part dinosaur and part reptilian. The evolutionary humming. Alongside the dinosaurs, you had the evolutionary hummings. Amongst the different species of evolutionary humming, you had the Australopithecines. There were two forms of Australopithecines that could walk and were erect. Their brain was one third the size of a modern human's brain. The smaller one stood about four feet tall and weighed about 50 to 120 pounds. This was your original pygmy, Kishite and Huillawai tribe, which your mother Hawa Eve came from. They had nine ether hair. The larger ones were 7 feet and had weighed 222 to 250 pounds. This was your original Watusi Kuthai tribe, which Kadmon Adam came from. They had 8 ether hair. They were the giants in the earth. All other humans had 6 ether hair, as other animals of this planet earth. 9 ether hair is a symbol of an extraterrestrial being. All animals and humans on this planet have 6 ether hair. Kadmon Zakar, also known as Adam, was also a mixture of Hindu, the original black man, mixed with a Shaggy, which is another set of beings that were coming to Earth from the Sirius star constellation. These Shaggies were not your hairy Bigfoot creatures. They came from the planet Aduma and the constellation of Sirius. Along with these Shaggies came the Greys, also from the same star constellation, from Zeta Reticuli, called Sirius B for biological entity. The Ramadians called Greys came from Pleiades and Octurus. When Nibiru passed Sirius B, its presence drained the energy from the sun and caused the great star Sirius B to collapse. Sirius A had two planets. The Narians, an independent species of Grey, were on one planet and the Nomos reptilians were on the other. Both planets rotated around Sirius A. So when their sun died, the Narians followed Nibiru through the Milky Way. While in pursuit, these beings, the reptilians, chased the Greys, the Ramadians, who also lived on Sirius because they wanted to rule over them and use them as slaves. Some of the Ramadians came down to the planet Earth from Zeta Reticuli. Both beings, the Nomos and the Ramadians, took residence on the planet Tiamat Earth. When the reptilians came, they tried to appeal to the Maldekian troglodytes that were living in the seas from the crash down that happened years ago because they were of their seed. However, these Maldekians who lived beneath the seas of the planet Earth had a very violent nature. The reptilians had to take residence in caverns beneath the surface of the Earth or in deep swamp areas in the planet Earth. They set out to conquer the Ramadians and take rule over them because of their passive nature. Some of the Ramadians came down to the planet Earth from Zeta Reticuli. They went directly to the original pygmy tribe of Bushmen in South Africa, who were the Kishites, Kushites and Hawilawites. They lived amongst these beings, and the Ramadians taught this tribe of the Anunnaki and of the beings from the star Sirius. The Kushites and Hawilawites became a mixture of these supernatural beings or extraterrestrial beings. These supernatural beings are the Ramadian greys that existed in the Nile River of the barren and rocky land of Nuba. They were associated with peace and harmony only. The pygmies called these supernatural beings Bahamalakat, or river angels. They lived in underwater castles. They were associated with four categories of human preoccupations, fertility, cultivation, marriage and health. Then, on the arrival of the reptilians, who in pursuit of the Ramadians also crashed down amongst the Dogon tribes and began to teach them by the shadow hours and would retreat to the sea by day. They told them they were the Nomos, who had come to guide them. If they would tell them the location of the secret caves that the agreeable Ramadians dwelt in. These Bushmen, the Kishites, Kushites, were of the family of Nakeba, including the Dogon tribe. Today they live in the deserts of the Kalahari, in what is called Africa today. The Nomos reptilians were also called the Dogri, or the Doga by the Nubians. They were also referred to as ugly water beings. The reptilians can be seen in the daylight, however they would roam mostly in the deep dark swamps and the marshlands. They took on different forms to appeal to the humans. They had a very violent nature which horrified most of these people. They always came out of the shadow hour and hung around the date trees. The Dogri enjoyed eating the dates of the trees. They also came onto land during the shadow hours to teach and mix with the Dogans. They would kidnap the virgins and rape them to implant their seed. It became a ritual to offer virgins in order to prevent the bloodshed. A negotiator was elected called a Hogan. Every six 60 years they would seek these virgins. This in turn led to female
of child sacrifice rituals to these serpent people, becoming willing blood sacrifices to what became known as Ha Satan, the head of the reptilian tribes, also called Shaitan, becoming a common practice and like an honor and a way to appease these malevolent beings. The Dogans of Mali in West Africa teach and speak of what they have been taught by these two tribes of extraterrestrials to this very day. The reptilians told the people of Nubia that they were lawgivers and the people called Namos, which is Salmon, Na Samun, poison, in Suraic Arabic as found in the Quran Quran. They taught them about calculations and about the Sagai, a 60 year period. They also lived in underwater cities linked to cabins deep in the earth. You have eight cabins occupied by extraterrestrials. This does not include Argata. The ruling species of the underworld are many. The one is called gnomes, which stand three feet tall and have porcupine-like quills protruding from their bodies. They live near lava and other volcanic environments. They live off insects and worms. They are extremely intelligent, taking pride in mastering all of the science and literature of the surface people. I once met a Diwani who could recite all of William Shakespeare. He knew the best of wines from the 17th century up. He could discuss everything from the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, the Torah, onto Sigmund Freud and the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright. They are extremely friendly and are of no threat to human beings, yet they have no interest in coexisting with human beings on the surface who they see as killers without purpose. Next there's the Samin, Dero, called Ganesh by the Hindus, who are born by hatching from eggs that are four to six feet in diameter. They grow to seven feet and are extremely obese, having two stomachs, and they chew of the cud. The Samin and Dero have no apparent fingernails or toenails, nipples or navel, or rectum. They regurgitate their food. Their eyes are light blue. They have blonde eyebrows and pinkish grey coloured skin much like the corpse of a carcassu. Their home was in cabins beneath Turkey, having not been exposed to the inner or outer sun. They have no teeth, but their mouth appears to be full of a gummy, slimy substance. They are nocturnal and hear extremely well. They're not very peaceful and have a great dislike for humans. They are very human in appearance, yet far from it. They have a long trunk-like nose, much like an elephant. They contend that the planet Earth was theirs originally, and it will be theirs again one day. The Samin Dira are constantly in conflict with the Duwani, who hold the same faith that they were both the original owners of the planet Earth. While on the surface, on the other side of the Red Sea, eastward of Eden in Chaldea, the demon beings Shiva, Vishnu and Brahma were coming back and forth to the Earth from their star constellation Procyon, the planet Nirvana, for thousands of Earth years. They are savage animals and are also called Chaldea, meaning demons. They became known as the original Asiatics. While all of this was going on, there were different kinds of evolutionary humans, human and behemoth, that were living on this planet Earth in the same era also. You had Genus Homo, the Australopithecus. The Australopithecus was a creature who lived many millions of years ago. They differed chiefly in size. There were two types of Australopithecus. The first form was the ones who stood four feet and could walk erect. The second form was the Java man, who was called Pithcanthropus, meaning monkey man or ape man. The other species was Paranthropus. Then you had other types like the Neanderthal, who lived for a hundred thousand years and then disappeared. Then there is the Cro-Magnon, who is said to have roamed Europe 400,000 years ago, including Homo erectus and many other species in between. The Peking man also belonged to this species, who was here half a million years ago, long thought to be along the migration of modern man. The Peking man was a type of prehistoric man, who lived about 375,000 years ago in what is now northern China. Members of the species Homo erectus, erect man, stood about five feet tall, were 150 centimeters tall. They had a brain about twice the size of an Australopithecines. Most of these species of evolutionary man came from the ape family. Among the different species of ape man, you have the black-haired La. This is where you get the word Lord or Master from. Lars, plural for La, were recognized for their intelligence. These Lars were the head monkeys or spiritual monkeys well known. This is where the word monks come from. When the Anunnaki chose to breed by gene splicing through Gestu, one of the Anunnaki, and Ninti, to breed the first mammy here, they chose to breed with the Lars because of their high intelligence. The red-haired orangutan was also a very intelligent ape, and the brown and black-haired chimpanzees had the best brains on the scales of evolution. 
The orangutan is a large rare ape. Some males have an arm spread of seven and a half feet, one of the largest of all the apes. The orangutan's arms reach to its ankles when it stands. The orangutans live in trees and rarely comes down to the ground. It moves through the forest by climbing from branch to branch. The orangutan feeds off fruit and leaves. The other type was the chimpanzee. The chimpanzee has the intellect of a four-year-old child and can be brought up to the level of a seven or eight-year-old. The chimpanzee is one of the most intelligent animals and resembles human beings more than any other animal. They usually walk on all fours and can stand erect when excited or trying to see over tall grass. The orangutans were used by certain beings to breed with. They used a species known as the baboon, the dog-like monkey and the orangutans together. The baboon is a large monkey. It has a large head, long sharp teeth and a muzzle much like that of a dog. A baboon's arms are about as long as its legs. Some baboons have short stumpy tails, but others have tails more than two feet long. The baboons are part hyena, jackal and monkey. The breeding with them resulted in your behemoth type carnivores called mankind, one of the many species of Kakazu. You have the red-haired, light green-eyed, yellow-haired, blue-eyed, brown-haired, grey-eyed and many others. While on the other hand, certain beings use the chimpanzee and the gibbon, which are an offshot of the Lars for breeding. There are several species of gibbons. They all have long arms and no tail. Gibbons travel through the tops of trees in small groups. The group usually consists of a male, a female, and one or two young. The chimpanzees and gibbons evolved into hummings, and they became your nubans, the original pygmy tribe. Their woolly hair comes from the supreme beings with 24 strands of genes coated in melanin. These are your original Anunnaki alahum. The guardians of the Nubans with nine ether, who in skin color were olive, as green as the greenest of olives. The gibbon is the smallest of the apes. It also ranges over a wider area than the other members of the ape family, the chimpanzee, gorilla, and orangutan. The dog race were called the behemoth. They are the beasts. They were part orangutan and part baboon, called the beast of the field. They were the fierce ones. Only some of these apes were used for breeding, and on the other hand, some of these beings weren't touched at all. They just kept on evolving. They all had six ether, as well as all other animals on the planet Earth. While all of this was going on, the larger meat-eating dinosaurs were eating and destroying everything. The early hummings were dying out, and proto-mammals were at the brink of extinction. So the elders thought it was a great idea to destroy the planet and replenish it again. Then a great extinction hit, 17,250,000 years ago. The second big meteorite shower hit the planet Earth 2,250,000 years ago. Most of the prehistoric men and dinosaurs were destroyed. The surviving tribes were the Pygmies, the Watusis and the Hindus. The Pygmies who had mixed with the agreeable Ramadians and the Watusi who mixed with the disagreeable Reptilians were led to shelters beneath the Earth. Some went behind waterfalls and in caves and caverns of the planet Earth to survive, while the Hindu tribe went back to their planet called Nirvana in the Canis Minor constellation Procyon. The story of humans we now know that tells of groups of mammals called primates takes us back some 45 or 50 million years when a common ancestor of monkeys, apes and humans appeared in Africa. 25 or 30 million years later, that is how slowly the wheels of evolution turn, a precursor of the great apes branched off the primate line. In the 1920s, fossils of this early ape proconsul were found by chance on an island in Lake Victoria. Besides proconsul fossils, they also discovered in the area remains of Ramapithecus, the first erect ape or man-like primate. It was some 14 million years old, some 8 or 10 million years up the evolutionary tree from proconsul. The richest fossil finds have been in Oduvia George in Tanzania, near Lake Rudolph, renamed Lake Takana in Kenya, and in the Afar province of Ethiopia. A Neanderthal skull was found near the Nile in Egypt, which dated back 80,000 years old. Because because a person's DNA keeps getting mixed by the genes of the generational fathers, comparison of the DNA in the nucleus of the cell, which comes half from the mother and half from the father, do not work well after several generations. It was discovered that in addition to the DNA in the cell's nucleus, some DNA exists in the mother cell, but outside the nucleus in bodies called mitochondria. This DNA does not get mixed with the father's DNA. Instead, it is passed on unaltered from mother to daughter to granddaughter, 
and so on through the generations. Thus, it is perfect to trace ancestral relations. This discovery by Douglas Wallace of Emory University in the 1980s led him to compare this mitochondria of about 800 women. The surprising conclusion, which he announced at a scientific conference in July 1986, was that the mitochondria of all of them appeared to be so similar that these women must have all descended from a single female ancestor. The research was picked up by Wesley Brown of the University of Michigan, who suggested that by determining the rate of natural mutation of mitochondria, the length of time that had passed since this common ancestor was alive could be calculated. Comparing the mitochondria of 21 women from diverse geographical and racial backgrounds, he came to the conclusion that they owed their origin to a single mitochondrial Eve, who lived in Africa about 300,000 and 180,000 years ago. This led to the search for Eve, Rebecca Kahn of the University of California at Berkeley had obtained the placentas of 147 women of different races and geographical backgrounds who gave birth at San Francisco hospitals. She extracted and compared their mitochondria. The conclusion was that they all had a common female ancestor who had lived between 300,000 and 150,000 years. The upper limit of 300,000 years, paleoanthropologists noted, coincided with the fossil evidence for the time Homo sapiens made his appearance. The mitochondrial DNA is only given from mother to daughter. The male species do not have any mitochondrial DNA. This is just further proof that the first person to walk on the planet Earth was a female. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using alkaline, the all. Tablet 10 The Replenishing of Tiamat 19 times 1 equals 19 Lo, now when the time had come for this marvellous replenishing of this desolate place known as Tiamat to begin, the Anunnaki Alahun, also called angelic beings, reconstructed two places under the command and rule of the selected one, El Malak, he who ruled from the heavens, being called the light of the heavens and earth, to whom there were no partners. El Elo, who is also Anu, first commanded the Anunnaki to reconstruct the two places, the firmaments, up there in the firmaments, which is the asteroid belt in the skies, which is between the lower planets and the outer planets where the water is, and the planet Tiamat's Earth is one of the lower planets, because Tiamat the planet Earth had become empty and desolate. No sun's light shined through the dust clouds onward to the surface of the waters, and the wind of Nibiru blew and moved back the dust clouds. Conversing amongst each other, the 24 selected, 12 agreeable and 12 disagreeable, called the Yahwehans or Allahum, asked Anu, let there be light, and the light was. And the Anunnaki saw how agreeable the condition would be with this great light again, and separated the light from the darkness. The Anunnaki called out that the light is daytime. The darkness of each side of this planet is to be in a state of shadow as the planet moves back into phase. This they called the shadow hours or night time. As a result of that, there was dusk and the beginning of a new day that took one period of 7,000 years. These are the words of speech in the beginning, for in the beginning was a conversation. And this set of words was between the Anunnaki, and these words were about the Allahum creating Allahum. This is how it was in the very beginning of this new cycle. By way of these Anunnaki, all the new things were made. Thus, there was not anything that was made or reconstructed that was not made by them under the command of Anu. All physical life and eternity for your soul or ether body was to be, and began. This is all by way of the all, yet some of you still have doubt. El Elo is your appointed deity in the heavens and the planet Earth. Anu, who is Elian Elian El, the Most High, the Highest. The All, El Kalum, knows your secrets and disclosures. El Kalum knows what you will earn and lose, as your body knows your every thought and move. The Prayer This is what they taught of prayer. You pray in your distress and you pray in your need, that you might pray also in the fullness of your joy and in your days of abundance. For what is prayer but the expression of yourself into the living ether? And if it is for your comfort to pour your darkness into space, it is also for your delight to pour forth the drawing of your heart. And if you cannot but weep when your soul summons you unto prayer, 
she should spur you again and yet again through weeping until you shall come laughing. When you pray, you rise to meet in the air those who are praying at that very hour, and whom save in prayer you may not meet. Therefore, let your visit to the masjid be invisible for naught but ecstasy and sweet communication. For if you should enter the masjid for no other purpose than asking, you shall not receive. And if you should enter into it to humble yourself, you shall not be lifted. Or even if you should enter into it, to beg for the good of others, you shall not be heard. It is enough that you enter the temple invisible. I cannot teach you how to pray in words. Listen to the messages of Anu from the Allahum to your words, save when he himself utters them through your lips. And I cannot teach you the prayer of Yam, meaning the seas and the forest and the mountains. But you who are born of the mountains and the forest and the Yam can find their prayer in which are thine in today's, which are thine also. We cannot ask you for aught, for thou knowest our needs before they are born in us. You are our need, and in giving us more of thyself, thou givest us all. But those who know, pray this prayer. Our Heavenly Father, for you are of the all, and you are in the all, and all is in you. Your head of the three hundred agigi of those in Nunakai, who are still in the skies, O oh, most holy. Your name is found amongst the holy ones, the Anunnaki of the heavens, for you were to name all the things that were brought into existence. Blessed is your name, O most holy. Your name is found amongst the holy ones, the Anunnaki of the heavens, for you were to name all the things that were brought into existence. Blessed is your name. Nothing and no one can give you a name, for your name is of the all. You have been appointed Anu. O Anu, your kingdom will come. And what you will and ask of us will be done on earth Tiamat, just as things are done in the heavenly skies amongst the Anunnaki. We ask you to please give us the breath of life each day where we raise, and we will procreate as you wish. And forgive us if we disagree, as we forgive those who disagree with us, and protect us from the evil ones and their temptations. For you are the ruler of all kingdoms, and all power is yours, and the glory forever and ever. And we know you have appointed one of the Yahwehans, your own grandson Adonai Tammuz, as our shepherd. And we have all we need, as you and the Anunnaki declare. Verily, we have given you all the abundance, so pray unto your sustainer and offer. Verily, your enemy shall be the one cut off. His seed will be cut off after six thousand years from the most holy day. He let us rest in the outer fields of green grass and leads us to quiet pools of fresh water. I am a primary care physician and he gives us new strength. He guides us in the right path as he has promised. Even if we go through the deepest fears of death, we will not be afraid because we know that you are with us. Your flail's rod and your was protect us from disagreeableness. You prepare a table for us where all our enemies can see you welcome us as an honored guest upon your ship and fill our cups to the brim. We know that your goodness and love shall be with us all of our lives, and your house will be our house as long as we exist. Tablet 11, the firmaments, 19 times 3 equals 57. Lo, now the selected 24 Anunnaki Alahum, of which there were 12 agreeable and 12 disagreeable, commanded the firmament, which is the asteroid belt, to be in the middle of this solar system, between Moon, Mercury, Lahamu, Venus, Tiamat Earth and Lahmu Mars and Kishar Jupiter, Anshar Saturn, Anu Uranus and Ea Neptune, the two sets of planets with water in the heavens above and the heavens below, so that it would separate the water on the planet Earth which is below from the water on the other planets above and the clouds. And the Anunnaki made an arch firmament, an asteroid belt in the sky, as a necklace to be donned visible, which is above in the planet's atmospheres, and separated the two waters. One which was beneath the beaten out firmament, Moon, Mercury, Lahamu, Venus, Tiamat, Earth, and Lahamu, Mars, from the other which was above. Kishar Jupiter, Anshar Saturn, Anu Uranus, and Ea Neptune, and this happened. 
the Aminakai named the firmament skies, and the dust period, and the new second day of 7,000 years was over, and the 24 selected elders, one for each hour of one earth day. The Aminakai sat in a circle and said amongst each other, The waters beneath the skies are to be brought together as one mass, as oceans, rivers, streams, and lakes, and let the dry land be seen. And this happened. The Anunnaki called out that key the planet Earth will be called Adama, dry brown ground, the landmass called Ki, and the Mayim called waters were gathered together. They called Yomiam, who was the brother of Baal, and he ruled the seas of Tiamat, and the Anunnaki saw that things this way were agreeable. And the Anunnaki said, in the name of El Elo, the appointed one, he was due all gratitude, the only true sustainer of sustainers of all the boundless universes, the caring, the loving. When all things end, it is up to Anu, who is Elian Elian El. Alien Alien El alone is to be worshipped, and we ask Elian Elian El for help alone. Elian Elian El guides us to the right way, the ways of those twelve agreeable Anunnaki, not the way of the twelve disagreeable Anunnaki, nor the ways of those who are two hundred agreeable and went astray. And the Anunnaki said amongst each other, the planet Earth should now spread buds, growing herbs with seeds in them, in order to yield new seeds. And a fruit tree should grow with seeds in them, from the land mass. And this happened. And so the planet Earth did bring forth grass, and herbs with seeds in them, and great trees within itself. And the Anunnaki saw that things this way were agreeable. The dust period, and a new third day of seven thousand years was over. The twenty-four selected counsellors of the original Alahum, who were called the Anunnaki, said amongst each other, Let the light exist in the skies in order to separate the daylight hours from the shadow hours. The daylight was called agreeable, twelve selected Seraphat, and the shadow hours were called disagreeable, twelve selected Garabat. You have your twenty-four, twelve disagreeable and twelve agreeable. Let them be as signs of the seasons of days and years as time for this planet. 24 hours in a day, 24,000 years in an equinox, as illuminating lights in the skies to shine upon the planet Earth. And this happened. The Anunnaki caused the older and brighter light to be seen in the sky in order to overpower the daytime. The symbol of the agreeable was the star as a great surface for life, the sun, to shine ever so brightly from the pure darkness, the very first state before light, to make things seen. The younger light of the lesser brightness has to be seen through the shadow hours. The symbol of the disagreeable was the crescent moon, which was ruled by the sun. They also made many outer suns as stars visible, and the Anunnaki made them appear in the skies in order to shed light on the planet Earth. This was to overpower the day in the shadow hours called night, and to separate daylight from shadow hours. The Anunnaki saw that things this way were agreeable, and the dust period of the new fourth day of 7,000 years was over. And they said, and for everything there is a time, everything that will happen in this new world will happen on time. And they set the 12 signs in the skies, called the cosmic clock, 12 periods broken into four seasons, bringing in the signs of the end of one age and the beginning of another. Thus, everything that will happen in this new world will happen when Elian Elian L wishes it to happen. Elian Elian L sets the time for birth and the time for death, the time for planting and the time for pulling up the time for what's dead and the time for what's healed the time for building and the time to tear down what was built a time for joy and a time for sorrow a time for mourning and a time for dancing and music a time to make love and a time not to make love a time to kiss and a time not to kiss a time for finding things and a time for losing a time to save and a time to throw away a time to if you could have your own Walmart store making thousands of dollars a day and you didn't even have to manage it, would you do it? $1,000, $5,000, even $10,000 per day or more in passive income. Fully built and managed, hands-free Walmart business. No previous e-commerce experience or complicated technical skills needed. No wasting time and money by figuring it out as you go. No more wondering how to make extra passive income. Just a real, profitable, fully managed... To speak and a time to remain silent. These are the laws on time. This is what they taught the Magi on time. 
you would adjust your conduct and even direct the course of your spirit according to hours and seasons. Of time, you would make a stream upon whose bank you would sit and watch its flowing. Yet the timeless in you is aware of life's timelessness and knows that yesterday is but today's memories and tomorrow is today's dreams. And that which sings and contemplates in you is still dwelling within the bonds of that first moment which scattered the stars into space. Who among you does not feel that his power to love is boundless? And yet, who does not feel that very love though boundless encompassed within the center of his being? and moving not from love thought to love, nor from love deeds to other love deeds. And is not time even as love is, undivided and spaceless? But in your thoughts you must measure time into seasons. Let each season encircle all other seasons, and let today embrace the past with remembrance, and the future with longing. The Anunnaki said amongst each other, Let the waters breed abundantly, all kinds of swimming creatures that are to live and birds that are to fly above the planet earth in the open skies the anunnaki recreated the tanin the dragon sea serpents and sea dinosaurs and all living spirits amoebas algae and fungi that swim which the waters bred from itself and all the winged birds pterodactyls from themselves and the anunnaki saw that things this way were agreeable the anunnaki put their blessings on them all by saying procreate and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and the birds are to multiply on the planet earth the dusk period and the new fifth day of another seven thousand years was over the anunnaki said amongst each other let the planet Earth bring forth living spirits from itself, non-speaking mammals and reptiles also living on the planet Earth. And this happened. The Anunnaki made to evolve all the living animals that appeared on the planet Earth to breed from themselves, and the non-speaking animals bred from themselves, and all the creeping things on the planet Earth bred from themselves, and the Anunnaki saw that things this way were agreeable. Chapter one, the Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using